We're rolling. Welcome back, everyone. Episode 83 of the Jiu-Jitsu Dummies podcast. Look at that. When you do the number eight, you get a three over here. <laughs> well, that's 83. Smart. My name is Milton Campus. I'm a brown belt training out of South Florida. Bo behind the camera. Hello. Hey. Miguel Ow. riding shotgun. <laughs> Shout out to Britt Tavara, booking manager. Hey. What up, Britt? Uh, joining us today is 15-year-old blue belt, Sophie the Dog Sharp. So she'll be joining us in a few minutes. The dog. Support for the Jiu-Jitsu Dummies podcast is brought to you by Manscaped. Does it sound weird when I start to talk yeah. about that? It is brought to you. Brought Ladies to you, and gentlemen, right, right. support for the Jiu-Jitsu Dummies podcast is brought to you by Manscaped. Yeah, hey, I heard they just came <laughs> out with that new car, the Model T. What the? Oh. Yeah. yeah. The, okay, the, gotcha. America's uh, first car. We'll do that again. Support right, yeah. for the Jiu-Jitsu Dummies podcast <laughs> is brought to you by Manscaped, the best in men's below-the-waist grooming. Manscaped offers precision-engineered tools for the family jewels. Best line ever. Manscaped recently launched the Ultimate Men's Hygiene Bundle. It's called the Performance Package. We're actually going to be talking about package, package, a, package. a newer package. We'll talk about it later in the episode. Another package. Join over 4 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with, their, with this exclusive offer. 20% off and free worldwide shipping with code JJD20. 20. But uh, stay I was tuned ready to, this time, dude. The, in the middle of the episode, we're going to talk a little bit more about uh, this uh, kind of new bundle that they have. And uh, new we've package. actually got some new, some new, new package, package, package. Package, package technology. Yeah. We've got some more stuff coming out, actually. I got the uh, yeah. reply. I showed you. Got the receipt yeah. to the new stuff that they're sending us. So very cool. Mysterious Milton. We are also sponsored by... Uh, who? Who's next? We have a lot of sponsors. We always do them in the same order. Is it? No. No, I don't know the order. Black belt digital marketing. You should have just went like that. You're really, <laughs> you're really good at putting me on the spot when I thought I was prepared. I know. I like if if it's you, the it, worst. I wouldn't do it if I knew you were going to be prepared. Hey, you know what? <laughs> I might not like what just ha what happened here, but I do like black belt net digital marketing. I know a guy there. He's pretty cool. You know, anything you need to build your business, web design, Google Ads, graphic design, we can help. Check us out at Black Belt Digital Marketing I know the on website. Instagram. I know the website. Or the website, <laughs> bbdigitalmarketing.com. Right, you go. Request a free online view of your online presence, your total presence. I didn't even know that was a thing. Today. Are you the only one that does that? No, or is it's that a like thing. that's a thing? It's a software that we that we use that we that we pay. Listen, a man, I'm a guy on the it. outside, so like for oh, okay. you people on the outside, like that's amazing. Like yeah, the way like, he we'll, explained we'll it scrub, to me. Like I'll look at your website. I'll send you back a video that talks about your website, your website speed, your overall SEO score. Um, your local so it's like you SEO get to look score. behind the curtain of all your social media yeah. presences that you have. The software pulls everything in and tells you your directories are good or bad, how many reviews you got, and should you be so getting more. So you're like Big where? Brother for analytics. Well, the, the software that's kind of scary. Guess. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. They sell that. You got know, it. I was watching. Uh, I've been watching. <laughs> I, I like to watch throw movies on in the background while I'm working. Yeah. Is it called Eagle Eye? Do oh you yeah. That movie Eagle Eye. Yeah. I forgot Shia how great. Yeah. Shia LaBeouf. Yeah. Shia LaBeouf. I love that guy. Hey, Shia I forgot LaBeouf, if you want to come on the podcast. I forgot how good that movie was. Yeah. I threw it like I'll if I'm working, I'll throw the TV on to just something in the background. Yeah. I like noise. And I usually like things that are like a little like something I've seen before so that I'm not like totally It's familiar, it, yeah. But a little boring, like a little like I don't have to pay attention. I put that on. It wasn't boring. I was like, "Holy sh I I can't work. I got to I, I, I turn it off. I've turned it off." Oh wow. I'm like this is too good. But I've been like Lunch and stuff like that. I'll put it Dude, on and I'll watch it. Made, I, great movie. I don't know if you know. Great movie about, and what a like in, what insight into like right, the world they today. Nailed it. And and also uh, Shia LaBeouf on uh, one oh no, it wasn't one oh six in Park, but I forget like the radio show. Great freestyle, right? With oh, Sway yeah, in the yeah, morning. That was a while. Ago. Sway in the so morning. Great freestyle. It's when like the world thought yeah. he was going crazy a little bit. But he's not. Dude, that dude's so legit. I think he's, he's got, legit. He, some weird things. Some weird things happen there. I don't care what happened. I like that guy. So I hope we'll talk he comes about it more if he do, if he starts doing jujitsu. All Bro, right, <laughs> did, he, I think he he might not do it, but he definitely yeah. grapples. I think that's how he yeah. hurt. Who was the dude that was playing the Venom? You remember his name? That actor that plays Venom. Oh, oh, uh, before like his shoot, they were like grappling, and he like hurt his shoulder really bad. Yeah, so yeah, the guy that uh, played uh, yeah Bane. Bane. Yeah, I'm I'm Tom Hardy. His name. Tom mm. Hardy. There you go. My also legit dude. Let he, me tell you he something. Does My, hold on. Yeah, of he course. Does yeah, that's why I know. I was gonna say. You know what I realized? I've just been real. I've been making a point to sleep more, and like I noticed the difference with the recall. I know I'm, I'm not. I knew I wasn't getting enough sleep. Yeah. 
and I've been forcing myself to go to bed earlier and get more sleep and yeah. I'm seeing the difference. I would want to nap every day in the afternoon and I don't, I'm noticing like, oh, I'm not tired. Well, it's three o'clock. Why not? Why aren't, why aren't I fading? Yeah. I mean, it sounds sleep. so, it sounds so obvious, but I guess for so long I would only sleep like six, maybe seven hours. Your parents, and I'm realizing your parents even were with right. the recall sleep that I'm always complaining about. Sleep, sleep is important. Yeah. Sleep is super yep, 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 important. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, like I'm noticing it with like, so oh, wait, how, need, what's, what's changed where I feel like my, I'm not losing my recall again? I'm happy for you, Milton. Yeah, so. You, it's the recovery that you talk and, about. Just recovery from life every day. And, look, for real, <laughs> and the CBD, I really do feel like I'm a different person when I'm taking the CBD. Excuse me. Yeah. I know, like you said something a different the other day. Person? Like, uh, like a I, whole nother different person? No, but I feel I feel better. Yeah. I feel... How about you feel like yourself? I feel a little... You know, for, for me, <laughs> there have been like... very specific things that have happened when I've taken CBD. And I, I talked about when I first took CBD, I talked about like yeah. acid reflux went away and I was just like, this is, nobody ever mentioned anything. As you're burping. I keep, I'm burping because of the coffee. Because <laughs> I had a beer before and the coffee. Acid reflux. But I, I, I noticed yeah. like I'm calmer. Yeah. Got to get on the CBD. Got to be doing it consistently for a little bit. Yeah. It's not like day one, you're just like, oh, everything's better. At least not for me. It takes a little bit of a while. It takes a couple of weeks. And then like I slowly feel myself. Can I give you a different perspective? Feeling differently. I don't think you feel like a different person. I think you're learning how to feel like how you're supposed to feel like yourself. Yeah. That's like going to the doctor and he says, what's, you know, what's, what's that joke about the pain? Oh, yeah. I got like, that from my ortho. Yeah. They use like, a, we're all born with two good knees. That one? No, no, oh, no. Okay. It's just like, what, he, he's like, uh, what's the level of pain? Like doctors say, like, oh, what's yeah. the level of pain? Zero, zero, to, to, zero ten, to ten. Yeah. And he's like, the normal amount of pain, and the doctor says the normal amount of pain is no pain. Yeah, <laughs> you know that's the normal amount. But not if your normal, if your normal life requires around you doing hard stuff. Yeah, like you yeah. think. Well, home, that means you're you, broken. You, that just means not you're broken. You. I mean, there's strong dudes that live out in the you. woods, you know, and that's all they do every day. They got yeah. aching pains, but yeah. I mean, that's it their normal. Breaks life. you again. I definitely, I definitely feel better. You know, I'm not just, just. Pointing at the neutral zone, it works. but I do, I feel, for me, I feel that it works. I love I it. I love the, I still, I'm using the roll-on. I'm using the tinctures and the roll-on uh, like every fine, day. You're finding your neutral zone. So, yeah. So. Are they well, next? Yep. Neutralzonecbd.com. <laughs> get 25% off with code JJD. There you go. Super close. To, uh, so Mysterious just, Milton? I, I, where Black Belt Digital Marketing is building the new website. <laughs> Yeah. For Neutral Zone's new product. Got it. So how cool is that? It's They're super a sponsor, cool. and we're also doing I the- I wish uh, I knew what it was. We're building the website. I'm just joking. I you know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm excited to to kind of roll that out. And it just, the, it was very cool that they had faith. in like, we were helping them just kind of redesign the logo just slightly, like yeah. adding some text to when the logo. When are we going to have them on? Um, at, pro, After the wipe. I wanna... oh, after the new product. You gotta cut that out, bro. You gotta you gotta beep that. Yeah, beep. we gotta do like a legit like radio. You know, like when the radio's out. Yeah, you can't, we I, I we can't say anything yet. So even though it's it's coming, well they they've they've put something online, so it's no, not it's, the, the palette was yeah. blurred out. No, the sun they have the the sun in a sample. I thought pack it was blurred of, out. I'm not gonna say no. This uh, go to their Instagram. You don't you don't know you don't know. No. What, you don't, you don't know. It's you don't know. I, it's it's really cool to be involved with a company that is growing and expanding and. Understands marketing. And yeah, it's it's fun. Well, to work it's with also like, that. like when I see their comments. Yeah, like I could just tell that they know the sport. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, and, the, the father and, and their uh, fans, and son, uh, both train. I know, and their fans too. It's like you could they they're like because obviously you know when you're like on on social media, like it'll show you their comments first because you follow them. Mm -hmm. So it's like when I see their comments on the same, we follow a lot of the same pages, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. and a lot of the comments are like. High level comments. They're not just like somebody like, who knows. Yeah, not not just know. like not just like an emoji. You know, it's always like hands, fire, heart. Yeah, whatever. It's not that. It's yeah. like a hey, what do you think about like? It's like a and it make. I was like, hey, that's it's good always one. good to like. Uh, it's it's cool when a client or sponsor, like, hey, we've done this enough. Like, okay, I've done marketing for fifteen years now. The podcast for three. We kind of know what works. Yeah. Like even when we talk about like flow and roll and. Instead of just trying to get them T-shirt orders, like getting you know talking about them their their products for you know geese and no gi kits, like now that we understand that, like that's a great way to coach new sponsors. You know, talking yeah. about hey, let, how do we sell in bulk? Could you white label not them specifically, but like like can you can you white label? Can you 
can we get your products in front of gyms and academies so that you're selling a hundred t-shirts, a hundred geese, a mm-hmm. hundred a case of of CBD, or something that's versus getting yeah. one order at a time. So it's really cool when somebody's like listening to you and going, "Okay, listen, I'm gonna I'm gonna take your advice and you, you know and, and grow into that, uh, either grow I into it or, or you know what I will I will say that that uh, I I would like more gyms and I have the pleasure of visiting several gyms. Um, I would like more gyms to have a, a steady, like public supply of like an amenity, whether it be, you know, like, like tape or, oh. or like something to like clean yourself or just something, or even just like, like a to go BJJ I, bag. I don't like think a lot of gyms clothes. realize like, okay, like they're selling their own stuff. I get it. You want to make your money on your own stuff, but if you gave me a little bit more, it doesn't have to be a store in your no. gym, but a place where you have the like the basics, like the things that I listen. I tell some nail clippers. Yeah, for a dollar to I would. How many times have I been Please. like, damn, though that, that nail broke. Like I would just say, Bro, let me, you know, you know how hey, many nail me clippers for that and, like, and grab a toenail clipper. Do you know how many nail clippers we break and, at and home? Cleaning products. Also, if it's just convenient, like a nail clipper, we go through or files. Like we go through. Yeah. Here's the thing. Like, I mean, I like I said. You know, and you know this about me. I grew up in a house full of women. So it's like I grew up with always having like nail clippers and like cuticle pushers yeah. and, and files. It's like it doesn't stop at nail clipping. Yeah. Oh, I do. I you do clip it. Myself. it yeah. It's still jagged. Yeah. File. Even if you bite your nails, you need yeah. the file. Yeah. Both. So that way it's like it's not. I got no. Yeah. You always. You're always. <laughs> I'm trying to look pretty. You're always right. Yeah. You toenails too. For jujitsu. For sure. Like um. As soon as I. Did I show like you? I feel like I might scratch myself. I'm like, oh yeah, look it's at time. This one I got. I mean, then the people on camera won't see it, but from the competition, if it's still there, look how big that one was. Somebody scratch up. Look at that. From a toenail. Yeah. Look, it's Ooh. from here to down here. Yeah, it's nasty. Cover that up, man. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so listen, back to Neutral Zone. Shout out to Neutral Zone. Find Love your Neutral Zone. with you guys. Find your Neutral Zone with their, they've got tons of different CBD products. What's their Instagram uh, handle? From, from the tinctures to the roll-ons to, they have uh, the massage oils. The oil. They do actually also have products for animals. Yep. And very I specific try that. products for women. They have face masks. Lots of cool things. So check them out. It's NeutralZoneCBD.com. Code JJD for 25% off. And their Instagram is... You're not going to remember. My Neutral Zone. Yes. <laughs> I know it. At My Neutral Zone. You can find them at, at My Neutral Zone. At, at. <laughs> <laughs> you can find them at www at. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Hey. All right. So uh, let's uh, let's shout out. You're wearing uh, the, the man's T-shirt today. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Hernandez Claims. Hernandez Claims. Yeah. Do you, you were looking for storm. Hope, are, are there any storms? Look, here's the thing, man. <laughs> you know, I was thinking about this on the way here because I'm wearing this shirt. So, like. I'm self-conscious about what I wear. Yeah. And I was just like, I hope nothing bad happens to anybody ever. Mm-hmm. Right. But also is, is better to have and not need the need to not have. Okay. You don't have to do anything with this dude. You, you just have to have bad luck when you have bad luck and your house gets jacked up or your business gets jacked up and you mm-hmm. happen to live in Texas or Florida, go to Hernandez claims website Fill out the lead form. He'll reach back out to you. And you're going to have to go through the insurance thing anyways. It's yeah. going to have to Why happen. Why not have somebody work and you on know, your you know what experience is? It's something you get after you learn a lesson. It's something you get yeah. after you need it. That's what experience mm-hmm. is. So if you got to go through the shit anyways, yeah. pardon my French. So for any, so anybody that's listening to yeah. us for the first time, George, he's a public adjuster. Yeah. He's somebody that works with your insurance company on your behalf to help settle a claim. He's going to try to get you the most that that he possibly can from the insurance company yeah. for damage to your home, um, a down tree. Don't show up. You know. Don't show up to a knife fight with a spoon. Yeah, All yeah. right. That's what's happening. And, and now again, he's, we've talked about it a few times. He's also licensed. He's Florida and Texas now. There you go. So give him a call. His, his phone number's on the website. If you're watching us on, on YouTube, you're going to see the number on the screen. Yep. Let the professionals get you the most compensation possible from your insurance company. Check him out at Hernandez claims on Instagram. Yep. Or visit their website. Hernandez claims. I don't know. Dot com. Dot com. I don't know. <laughs> I don't even say the dot com. That was it, so I nailed it. We can't forget our man. <laughs> yes. We can't forget our, our main man, Sean, over at Flow and Roll. Hands down the best custom gi and no gi I know in his the Instagram. business. I know his Instagram. Don't believe us. Visit them on Instagram at flow underscore and underscore roll. 
and check out all their custom designs. They work with academies across the country. Uh, they're even doing wrestling singlets now. Uh, he, you know, I actually go to him. For, I actually go to him every once in a while for like t-shirt printing. Yeah, I sent Neutral Zone over his way. Um, he's so, you cool. Know, hey, you know, like he he does other things. He does other printing, but obviously his focus is on the martial arts community and and now wrestling too. Uh, we got our podcast. He's, he's on their website. He's go a sponsor their, of ADCC. He's a sponsor of ADCC. Check him uh, out. Yeah, we will. We we're going to talk about that more later. Um, we're doing our rash guard is we're going through like a major edit of the, of the rash guard. <laughs> so, because you, you know what? No, well, you know why I know. I you just let, love it. You, we, Yo, we, well, we had, we had to, you know, I, there was an element, let's talk about it. There was an element in the shirt that was, um, bro, it, had, it, had, it had bullets on it, you know, and we laughing. didn't think about it until, until we, after the shooting Senor. in Texas. And we said, yeah, you know what? This would be in poor taste to put it out, especially with his, it was in, we didn't realize how in poor taste it would have been with such a big Obviously, part of flow and rolls. Yeah. Um, their, you know, their customer base, this uh, children. Yeah. We didn't realize it. We caught it. We said, you know, maybe this I'm is laughing this, for this a, a completely thing. different reason. So I'm, anyway, so we're doing that. We're doing a major edit. Most of the components are still the same. We took your, we took your peace symbol okay. idea with the veins on the heart. That was we're doing that. That was Bo. Was that him? That was Bo. We're, we're, that we're, wasn't do, me. we're doing that. That's a part of it. Uh -huh. And then we're doing like a, 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 a different type of peace symbol in lieu of the helmet and the bullets and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So, so I just want to say that I hope that one day somebody puts out a montage of how many months of you saying what you've been hey, saying. Hey, this shit takes time, man. I understand, but it's just funny. It would be like, we, like, we like you know, we Joe, have been done. Like Joe Rogan saying the word chimpanzee. Like if if, yeah. if you're just like, oh, I look, like literally you could probably make a 10 hour video of Joe Rogan going, I love Buffalo Listen. Trace whiskey. Ah. <laughs> uh, Chimpanzees are crazy. You know how strong they, they are. People do that. Hey, already. Jamie, pull up that chimpanzee that has no hair. They look just like us. Like, and I love the guy, but like, literally, sometimes when he, I know when to I zone mean, you're out. You're talking about, you know, you're talking for a, a three hours. Let's say two to three hours on 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 his show. Two to three hours. Bro, you, I the could, same I, things are gonna come up. I I, 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 watch, I, I, watch. Wait, wait, wait. I recognize, like, when I say my age. Yeah. Yeah. Like how I'm like, or my weight, or that. Or, I'm a, like, yeah. I'm a big guy and pulling. Okay, the guest. Remember, we're talking to the guest, and it's like yeah. the people watching and listening are flies on the wall, right? That's kind of what a podcast is, I right? I get it. So yeah. it's like the the person I'm talking to hasn't heard that before. Unlikely that they've heard it unless they listen a lot. So like, so you got to kind of say it, but I, I do it. realize like, oh wow, I've said that Dude, a million the times. <laughs> you could, it, in the future, there could be a jujitsu dummies bingo game in the center square. <laughs> is gonna be this damn rash guard. <laughs> Okay. Now, we, I, we got so much more planned. There's so much, so uh, so many other things we're gonna do. It would have been done, and we probably would have went into production. Yeah. If it wasn't for the shooting, and then we realized it. But you know, this we is... didn't make we didn't make the rash guard. The rash guard wasn't designed for flow and roll. No. The rash guard was designed for us for the podcast, and we it's mainly gonna be for giveaways for guests, bags, right? Yeah. And then Sean loved it so much how it was coming. He's like, I'm gonna I'm gonna carry this at my booth. And then we talked about like long sleeve and short sleeve and how like kids like the long yeah. sleeves better. And then that came up and it was just like, I remembered him saying like, oh, you know, I'm going to carry this. I'm going to put it at my booth. And when he talked about the kids and then that's what, when it came out, when he showed me the last design, I was just like, yeah, he's one, this is going to be in front of kids at events. Yeah. This is in poor taste. Right. This is in poor taste even before this last shooting. And only because of the audience, if it was like more of a veteran only audience or an adult, veteran audience right it, w it would have went over great and and maybe some people be like oh you should have done it i just i think it's in poor taste especially with what what just recently happened and, and we agreed and we said let's take so it off on a, on a more serious note uh this should give everybody insight of how long something takes oh yeah to like, do it especially yeah. just to do it the way you want to do it and you know that yeah. things change while you wanted to yeah. do it and you you have different obstacles when you're now trying your, to do your, your leg locker with him went a lot more quickly right was it yes because yeah. i have great ideas that's <laughs> <laughs> that was great. That was that. That's I. That I was just it. a I, I, I have the rash guard. I got my rash guard. Yeah. But I haven't. I haven't trained. <laughs> I wore on a no gi day yet since going. And I've only trained like I, twice in the last three months. I have to. I haven't been able to wear it yet. So I'm excited to wear it. I wore it to a Memorial Day open mat, and my first role because we were at a different gym. They picked out who 
like their higher belts were like, you come here, you come here. Cause yeah. there were so many people there that it was limited mat space. And they saw you with the leg lock. And, hey, get the and, leg no, they here. gave me, they gave me this 18 year old purple belt. That's competitive. And I mean like way lighter than I am and I'm old. It's in the morning. It was after a Sunday, you know? So I'm like, it's Monday morning. Let me warm up. I did not have a warm up role. This first thing he goes for, he drops straight into Ashigarami. We're in the gi, goes straight for a straight ankle lock. And I'm just like, dude, I'm not even warmed up yet. You know, so I tap, whatever. And then, then it goes straight, like jumps, like jumps guard. Jumps guard. I would say 19. Yeah, he's like 19, <laughs> maybe. And and Mays probably weighs like 130 pounds max. And just, dude, just flying all over the place, flying arm bar. Next thing, I'm just like, whatever, man. I'm just gonna hug this guy. That doesn't even work. This dude's so scrappy. But I'm just saying, it's so funny that I wore the leg locker shirt. And the first thing he did was like, well, let me show him a leg lock. And I was just like, I wasn't wearing it to be cocky, bro. I'm yeah, just, I got to be careful. I gotta be yeah. careful who I wear that around. I'm just saying, it's like having a handlebar my, mustache. People, I, I don't have the kind of leg lock game that I, that somebody wearing that shirt should have. Yeah, I but, just I bought it to support and because it's an awesome design. It looks cool, for sure. All right, so let's give a, the uh, flow and roll a proper uh, a complete shout out. So check them out on Instagram at flow underscore and underscore roll, and their website is flowandroll.com. and you can use JJD. Code JJD to get 20% off any of their products on their website. That coupon code is not good for their bulk orders. So you're not going to call to order 100 geese for your gym and get 20% off. Okay. So again, flowroll.com. Check them out. What's that? You're going to get a good price though. Um, yeah. So uh, last thing we want to mention is remember that we're just like, I haven't posted about it. We've only talked about it on the show. I am working on a post though. Um, if you buy any products from any of our sponsors, send us a receipt, make sure you redact any credit card information. We don't want that. We just want to know that you purchased. I do want to see like you use the coupon code, send us a copy. You can send it to info at jujitsudummies.com or just DM it through to me through Instagram. Even Facebook is fine. Uh, send it to me. We're going to put you guys in a raffle and we're going to get you about, uh, we're going to pick one winner and they're going to get a hundred, $250 worth of jujitsu swag, including the Peace Love Jiu-Jitsu um, rash, guard. rash Guard that's coming out. Okay? So don't forget. Uh, all right. Anything else? Good? Yeah, man. Let's we let's get to this guest. Let's do it. Let's get Sophie in here. All righty. Wow. And joining us today is Sophie the Dog Sharp. How are you, Sophie? Really good. How about you guys? We're really good. Doing Thank you right. for being patient with the uh, little technical difficulties. Yeah. yeah. Of course. I appreciate it. Well, there was two Sophies. What's that? Oh, there were two, yeah, there were two selfies yeah. on the screen. There's a lot of stuff going on. Now there is uh, two selfies. I'm watching yeah. Sophie right now. There's three of them now. <laughs> that was a, that was an aggressive guard pull. So yeah, Miguel's yeah. watching your Emerald City match, which I I didn't want. I was I watched you on another podcast. It looked like you did a podcast with a teammate. Yeah. Uh, about a year ago, I watched that, and you kept on talking about the Emerald. City. I'm like, I gotta watch this match. I got I was gonna watch it when we got down here, but then we get into match. just weird conversations about nothing that has to do with jujitsu. And we ate up an hour, and I completely forgot. So sorry about that. Had you already done wrestling when you started when you when you did this match? No. So you that's have... kind of why I jumped guard. Let's yeah. uh, let, let's talk about that match. So uh, I, you know, I know that was uh, like your coming out party, kind of, right? It was. Uh, yeah. That was a big deal for you. Tell us why. It was the first ever super fight that I won, so it was a big like oh, wow. hallelujah okay. moment. <laughs> yeah. Now, did you have? Did you have like a couple of losses leading up to that? Is that what happened? Yeah. So mm -hmm. this was a big deal for you to. Yeah, it was like a finally the victory happened. Yeah. So let, let's talk about it. I know we're kind of jumping ahead a little bit, but how do you how do you handle losses? You know, does it really affect you? I mean, you know, as a I'm a you know, I'm an old man. He's an old man. You know, I know when I'm you know, when I was 10, 11, 12, I played sports. I would really be affected by a loss in a team sport. How mm -hmm. did you feel? What did you go through? Tell us a little bit about it. I mean, losing's never fun, but I mean, you can't take it that much to heart because you're always going to lose matches. I mean, it just happens whether like you're super duper good, like you're at the highest level, like something wrong could happen. And then the match switches to the opponent, they win. So, I mean, for me, you know, I kind of like, it's really bad for me because I mean, obviously I want to win. Yeah. But <laughs> I just saw the win. You just got to the submission. <laughs> <laughs> that's 
I mean, that sucks for your brain and for your shoulder all at the same time. Why? What? Tell, tell us what happened. Uh, so, Commentate it. So it's an aggressive guard pull at the beginning. Okay. The girl has really good balance, the opponent. Um, then another guard pull. Then it looks like you're trying to intimidate her into a shoving match. Yeah. <laughs> and, and she actually, she engages back. And as soon as she engages back, she pulls guard again. And then starts going for like like a double leg trip off of a guard pull while she breaks mm-hmm. guard, gets her off balance, but then brings her forward instead of trying to bring her back. Mm-hmm. So yeah, she, bring- she tried to snack me a little. Yeah, and then slipped right into a triangle, and then so she you pushed her arm behind, which was kind of weird. I would mm-hmm. think that you'd want to push it here to get the finish. Well, you could kind no. of like a kimura to the back a little bit. Yeah, like- but then but she- on the side. Yeah, but you- she put her arm on the outside, which is a good defensive position for her. But she left that arm open mm-hmm. and she turned, she like readjusted a little bit and turned the angle. So she was way perpendicular with her opponent, which makes the triangle. Put the arm hidden. Still, yeah. Okay. But, it, but it still makes the triangle way worse when you're that yeah, perpendicular yeah. with your, with the, with the other person. And then grabbed, went ahead and grabbed the Kimura and yanked it up. And the girl was tapping and it could have been bad because like where her other arm was, it was like the ref didn't even go to the other side. He was still like in front of it and you couldn't see any hands or anything. Yeah. And she was like tapping underneath. And she was still going. And then it was like, tap, tap, tap. She let it go. And she looked upset. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So how did that feel? That that was, uh, again, you're coming off of a couple of losses. Yeah. And- Especially being like the first ever Emerald City card. I mean, it was still kind of like on the lower level, but it was still pretty big because I think like PJ Barch was on that card and everything. So there were a couple big guys. So having that win in the second match and, I thought it was a pretty exciting match. I mean, we kind of went at it a little, so I felt pretty good about it. It was good. Yeah. Yeah. You, you played your game. It seemed like it. Yeah. Yeah. So let's go back. Let's, let's start from the beginning. When did you start jujitsu or when did you start martial arts? And then when, when did you start jujitsu? So before jujitsu, I did really competitive Taekwondo. Mm -hmm. Um, I started at the age of six and all of my sports is because of my older sister. Like she always got me into them. So she tried Taekwondo for her birthday, and then I kind of followed her footsteps. So I'm 24, like, national champion, five-time regional champion. Oh, wait, no, switch that. Five-time okay. regional champion, 24-time national champion, and then one-time world champion. Wow. Wow. World champion. Yeah. The whole wow. world. Mm. Yeah. And, Just and, at kicking. Yeah, <laughs> basically. That's really good. So, how does that lead you to jujitsu? Why? Why did you stop? I'm assuming you don't do taekwondo anymore. I know you yeah, don't. No. How did that lead you to jujitsu, and and why did you choose jujitsu over taekwondo? So, taekwondo is it's kind of like the same thing over and over again. Once like you get like a higher belt. So after five years of doing that, it got <clears throat> pretty boring. And so I got my black belt and everything. And like a couple of days after I was like, all right, peace out. Like I'm leaving. <laughs> my older sister, who's about two years older than me, was like, I want to do wrestling. But she's like never done anything like that. And so my mom found a sport called jujitsu, found a super local. It was actually a Nick Salas' place. Really? Uh, I did with his dad. He was my first ever coach. But uh. He shut that down to pursue his dreams. And, uh, yeah. That's who was that? Nick who? Nick Salas. Oh, we just had Nick on. Yeah, yeah exactly. Oh, so Nick Salas. I'm Hello. Like, yeah. <laughs> and that's, why, that's why I did what I did over oh, there. Oh, I was like, I heard, I heard Nick. I'm like, who'd you say? Somebody sounded like somebody famous. He likes salads. <laughs> <laughs> so Nick, was, Nick had a gym before he had his current gym? Was, was this at Marcel's? Yeah. Or? It was okay. called... First, it was called Gladiators, and they switched it to Pure Wave. Okay. But uh, after about, like, almost a year, I want to say, um, he shut it down to go to Marcello's. Okay. That's a, I think when we spoke to him, we kind of picked this it up was, right this, from... This was, like, the like the origin story. Yeah. That we're Nick didn't tell her. We're going yeah. to actually have Nick back on with his partner, and now we got to bring that up. Yeah. We gotta, we got to talk about it. It's a small world. Hey, move that candle. <laughs> move for real. I forgot move, that we had move it. Move that candle. Yeah. <laughs> We're blocking the sponsor. Bo, that's, all, that's oh, your job. Oh, shit. We never got rid of the candle. <laughs> yeah, just just put it over in the corner over there. Gotta just make don't spill it. smell good, you know? Yeah, you know, three smelly guys in a little room. It uh, <laughs> gets a little ripe. Hey, don't, 
So yeah, so we so it's we had a, we giant, had Nick on the show. Giant room. What's mm-hmm. that? It's a giant room. It's a giant room. Movie magic. So yeah. <laughs> so so you trained with Nick, and then you went. Where did you go from there? When then he closed, after, you went where? Yeah. So after Nick, I went to a place called Garden State, and it was all right. It wasn't really my style. So then that's where Kurt Pellegrino's place came in. Okay. Was there for about two years, um, and then I got to studio. Studio four, and that place was, I mean, that place was amazing. Yeah. Um, I don't think there'll be anything ever like that ever again. Like that group was something special. And now I'm at Bayshore BJJ under Joe Dockery. Okay. And Let's go back to Studio 80, 84, yeah. Studio 84, right? Yep. Um, I know John Combs taught there for a little while. Yep. Um, but I know that some other big names were there. Who else did you train with there? Uh, towards the end, Keith Gregorian was there. He's super cool, dude. Um, Nicky, Nicky Rod, and then obviously his brother, Jacob. Um, and then a bunch of like people just like popping in too. I mean, it's hard to name all of them, but you just had like a couple like high level guys pop in here and there, especially for the comp classes that Jay Rugabuto taught. So, yeah. You, you miss, sweet. Sounds like you missed those days. Oh, could you yeah. could you imagine being yeah. 15 and having good old days already? Yeah, right. I mean, <laughs> how long ago? How many years ago was that? I mean, it's like. Oh, that was. It was kind of recent. Yeah. I mean, it yeah. was still in 2021, but. Hey, yeah. I, I will say this: you got time on your side. I think you got a couple more good old days that haven't happened yet. <laughs> I All agree. Right? I agree. Yeah. <laughs> so okay, so Taekwondo, you find jujitsu. Mm-hmm. You've been to more gyms than I have. I've been, I'm like doing this nine <laughs> years hopper. now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you've, you've seen more action than I have. Um, so what, what belt are you currently? I'm a blue belt. Oh, oh you are. Okay. And yeah, you are, a- you're, how old are you? I'm 15. Okay. How long have you had that blue belt? Oh my gosh. I think it was since February, March. Okay. I know like, you know, like up here, like, I mean, and look, this is, Blue belt's a blue belt. I'm a blue belt. But I mean, like, yeah. Miguel's, yeah. Also, Miguel's a blue belt. Miguel's also yeah. only 14. No, I know. Like, some Mentally, places yeah. will, like, you can't get your blue belt before 16. Like, you'll wear a green yeah. for however long. We were but... just talking about this. Yeah. Well, not right. No, no. What I'm saying, I was like, this is awesome. Like, we were just talking about this. So, it, it, it was that, was it like, you're so good that they had to give you the blue belt? Or what, was there that rule in place in, in, so in any of the gym? <laughs> no, I'm serious, right? Like, you know, most, a lot of gyms will say I don't not think, till 16. I mean, you're wearing the green to 16. I mean, when I was at studio, I was supposed to get my blue belt there actually before the owner shut it down out of nowhere. So once I got to Bayshore, they did like a whole surprise and I'm still under Jay because he came and, you know, tied the belt around me with, the okay. owner of Bayshore. So I got it as like a surprise, but technically I was already supposed to have it. Oh, and it's go. also because I don't do any IBJJFs. I did it once, but because I'm a lot more of a nogi person, I kind of stay away from IBJJFs. So. I, I think I heard you talk about not really loving the, like fighting with points, right? Yeah. Why I, don't you like that? I dig that. Uh, I don't, they're just so annoying in my opinion. Like, <laughs> like you could do like one thing and they'll like give the other person a point. And I mean, I always know the rule sets to any competition I go to. I'm just, I always like to come prepared, but like some refs aren't the best refs and they'll just be like one point to the other opponent. And I'll be like, what? I'll say it. So, <laughs> I'll say it. Go ahead. When you, when you go against an opponent and IBJJF competition is you against is you against the other person and the ref and the ref and the ref I yeah. 100% agree with and that and that's that's for both and, sides you know and, what i mean for yeah. the other person too but like it is that it's like the yeah. and a lot of times so the, the refs are like local guys I don't worry about that you know it's the same ones i'm sorry what say that again cuz I, I talked over I you guys you don't gotta worry about that. So there you go. I don't. I don't know their names, but I watch enough events to know which refs that I like. Yeah. Like I like the black dude with the dreads. I like that guy. I like the really, really like fat black guy. And I know these are all like probably really well respected black belts. 
and, I, and the BJ like, hey, take hey, that fat guy. I don't know their names. <laughs> I know they could all probably crush me, and I know they're. I know that, but those refs don't know. Like a lot of times, the refs are from the local. No, nah, dude, there's some refs. They, there's some there's refs some that, that travel, that but are, there's some that. Oh, for sure. You know, like Aron. Aron's yeah, Aron, always at the. He's all over Florida. And you know what? I like him, and he's also super honest. If he knows any of the fighters, yeah, he'll step off the mat. Oh yeah. Okay, yeah. that's what I was gonna say. Is like sometimes you know. You, you potentially trained with these people that you're going to ref, or you, maybe you trained with one. Or same or you know school. The coach, you're at the same school. When you're pulling out somebody local, you know, to, yeah. to ref a match. Yeah, I don't, I don't like that part of it. <laughs> but you just don't like points, huh? Yeah. You like uh, you you like the thought of a, the purpose of jiu-jitsu is submission. Yeah. So. Based, honestly, yeah. Yeah, like, and I agree with that. The gi, I kind of like points more because you can get sweeps better. But, like, because I wrestle a lot more now, like, I don't know. Points just don't make sense for when it comes to no gi for me. How do you like how do you like folk action. style wrestling then? Say that again? How do you like folk style wrestling? I'm, I love it, honestly. Yeah. I, like, folk, I don't even know what folk style wrestling is. What that's is that? like the primary style of, of wrestling you do like in, in mm-hmm. elementary school through high school. Okay. Yeah. And, and college. Okay. Yeah. But what I'm saying, that's point based. That's point based, you know, two points, take yeah. down, you know, there's no like take the back points that counts as the take. Well, yeah, but she's not in competing in it. She, she is competing. No, she's ta- no, not in that wrestling. Um, she's, we're talking about utilizing your wrestling in a. No, in a, in I was, I was only situation. she doesn't, she doesn't, she doesn't like points in jujitsu competitions mm-hmm. because the point of jujitsu submission. is submission. Yeah. She doesn't mind points in high school wrestling because the point of high school wrestling is to get points. So Spot it's on. not, it's not <laughs> stupid here, but it's stupid here. Yeah. She just said I'm spot on, by the way. <laughs> that doesn't happen too often. I he's, did both. I agree gonna, with it too. He's gonna he's gonna throw that in my face later, Sophie. S- straight up. I've been <laughs> in you see, like see, I asked a good question. I've been in competitions where if it wasn't six minutes long and if it wasn't six minutes long and there weren't points, just give me like seven more minutes and I know I could beat this guy. <laughs> Honestly, that's another thing. Before I got my blue belt, matches for me were only like five minutes. And jujitsu, that's not a lot of time, in my opinion. No. So, like, if it's a points only, like trying to get that many points in just five minutes, you know, you got to like hustle up a little bit. Yeah. You got to respect the game, though. Those guys that play yeah. for the points and they like, they outgame the game. They're like video game players, <laughs> man. It's, it's ridiculous the way they jump guard, the way they, they know how to stall. And not have it be a penalty. Like they're that good. They game the system. It's so it's incredible to see, but I could I can't. I don't like it either. So tell me about you know when you're leaving. I I've, I've been at two gyms in my life. I you know trained at two gyms. I've been to other gyms, obviously. Mm-hmm. How how bummed you? How hard it is to get restarted at another gym? Ah, uh, it's a little difficult, especially like for one of my gyms. I was there for two years. So it's definitely like a restart in jujitsu because like you meet all your new teammates and you got to get used to, you know, your professor and your other coaches teaching. And, you know, it's definitely different and it can be a little frustrating and hard because at first I know I've been to some schools where I'm like, I hate this teaching. Like, I don't know how I'll ever be able to deal with it. But after a while, I mean, you get used to it. At the end of the day, it is jujitsu still. So, I mean. Have you ever gone to a gym that you were like, okay, gym closed, you're going to figure out where you're going to go next, and you're like, yeah, definitely not this one, and I'm going to move oh, on like to another gym? Or like the free trial oh, yeah. classes? You, did you do oh, that? Yeah. Did you jump? Yeah. Like You were like, all right, let me let me feel the water. Like when studio shut down, I tried out like two gyms that I was like, no, thank you. Yeah. So now I have a, a, another question about as it relates to that. So when you go into a new gym, do you mm-hmm. come in there and try to wreck shop? Like you're, yes. I'm subbing everybody. I'm going to put my, I'm planting my flag. Or do you go in a little bit more humble and like, all right, I'm going to maybe pull some guard and let some people work on me a little bit just to get to know people. Wh- which type of person are you? I'm definitely a little bit more on the humble side, but I don't let them like destroy me. Like I'll definitely like go for submissions and everything. I won't let you like fully beat me. Like I'm not going to make it easy. Yeah. But I mean. You sandbagging? So you're saying you're going to the new gym sandbagging? A little bit. Yeah. Just a little bit. All right. <laughs> <laughs> you got to be conscious of the 
Yeah, the, the delay. delay. There's a little <laughs> delay on the mic, so we'll I try not to I interrupt you. No, okay. you just gotta. That I'm like staring at her lips because if she's gonna talk, I know to stop. Because <laughs> the there's like a little delay when you talk for us. If we if we talk over you, then it gets all jumbled. So we'll uh, okay. we'll be conscious of that. Uh, so, uh, who else in your family does jujitsu? Uh, the, just me, my dad, and my little sister. And was, was your dad your first coach? I think I heard. Yes. Yes, yeah. he was for many, many years. Yeah. <laughs> and now you say that, is that, was that a good thing? Is it like, I'm yeah, happy that I, my dad's not training me now? <laughs> we grew a really good bond. I would say I'm closest with my dad and my whole family. Yeah. Just because, I mean, he almost like Trinity said on her podcast, he's like my Uber. <laughs> I'm sure that. once I get my driver's license, he'll still be driving me everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> what, what belt rank is he? He's a purple belt with four stripes. Ooh. Mm. So, How long has he been training? As long as you? Dirty brown. Almost. He's actually started after me. Oh, yeah. So, wow. You me inspired him. Yeah. Well, it's it's also the age thing is is holding her back. What's that? Like well, I mean, the belt's belt. Yeah. <laughs> do, you, do, you get, do you roll with your dad a lot? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Do you tap, yeah. Do you tap him out? Do you tap him? Of course. Of yeah. Course. yeah. <laughs> he's not letting you well no disrespect intended but is he going easy on you or oh, is he no. <laughs> like is he really wow she got me he's really yeah. trying to to fight and yeah. Yeah. no anytime we roll because we don't roll too too often because i mean we're father and daughter i mean yeah we can roll with each other anytime we want mm -hmm. but when we do roll we we really go at it like we wrestle with each other Trying to smash each other to the ground. I mean, is it like move the coffee table at home? Let's go, Dad. Come on, <laughs> let's go now. For sure. Yeah, that's dope. That's cool. I'm I wish. I'm wish. I actually, I get that. Miguel's get got it. two kids. That he's got two small children that yeah. are that are doing jujitsu. Oh, nice. Yeah, I get. I get my neck cranked on every day <laughs> of the week. Every single day of the week. How are they? How are they taking to it? Your how's your little guy? And uh, so he just competed this weekend for the yeah. first time. And first time. First time, yeah. Really? And uh, he learned. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he learned a lot. <laughs> yeah. And uh, But he did great. He yeah. really did do great. But, it, like, the home environment, like, uh, Hayden Hayden hates going, but once she's there, she has a good time. Yeah. And she's also good. She's, like, low-key good, but she doesn't like doing it. Yeah. But as long as I see her learning, that's the whole point. Yeah. I just want her to have that, that ace up her sleeve her whole life. Will you yeah. push? Will you push her if there's a time? If where she she's under my back? roof, she's trained. Yeah, that's the rule. She knows. Yeah, yeah. Then little guy is ready for to him. Go. For him is actually something I learned from this podcast before I was on it. Uh, he's training, so he's not a bully, and so he's not cocky. Okay, that's right. good. Yeah, yeah. For him is to keep him humble. Yeah, because he's froggy, yeah. <laughs> and for her is to make sure that she has uh, confidence and has uh, she knows what danger looks like. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Now, Sophie, you do you you do kids classes, right? You're are you yeah. coaching as well? Mm hmm Do you do you love it? Do you is oh, that that's like like I love competing. Competing will always have a special spot in my heart, but my biggest goal is to open a gym with my dad. Oh, that's awesome. That's dope. Yeah. I, I've talked about that a lot on this podcast. Like my favorite thing. I never I coached in my first gym from like white to blue. I helped my coach. And then mm -hmm. he would sometimes not come in to like, he couldn't open the gym. He was in law enforcement, so he would get called away and he, I had a key or I'd open the gym with, I'd open the gym with his wife. And, you know, we, I, I had to do the kids classes and sometimes I had to do the adult classes. So I, when I look back on that, that was my favorite time in jujitsu. And it's yeah. also like, I feel like I'm a brown belt now. And I feel like technically I was better at white and blue. Because I constantly had to teach things that maybe I don't use all the time now, but like I would remember foot placement or where does my arm need to be or just the little mm -hmm. details helping the other guys. Like it made my game, but I know that it made my game better back then. I was yeah. way more technical. Now I'm like that makes total sense. smash and pass and, you know, Hulk smash kind of, you know, jujitsu. But I loved, I loved it. That's, it's, you know, I don't know that I have aspirations to open a gym, but. I love that's my favorite part of jujitsu is helping other people. And, and yeah. I kind of asked you that before when you said, uh, you know, I was asking like, what kind of person are you when you go into a new gym? Cause I'm always like, I'm going to like pull guard and I'm going to let them work to, so that I can figure them out a little bit. 
I want to see you. You're going to be a jerk and really take advantage of this and then try to smash me when I'm letting you like advance. Or are you going to, you know, are you going to like really go, oh, well, I'm rolling with the brown belt and I should learn something, you know, again, obviously when I'm rolling with the lower belt. So I, I like, I like to be, you know, a little bit, I don't, I don't call myself humble, but I do like when I'm doing jujitsu, I like to, I like to let them advance. I always say I let them control the, the, the volume, you know, so that's me. But again, that the, the <laughs> except when I'm rolling with Miguel, which we haven't rolled together in a really long time. I'm ready, bro. Yeah. Yeah. I'm scared if he's in a place now they're focusing on leg locks over there. My confidence is real low right now. Yeah. <laughs> it's low? Yeah. Yeah, but you, you know, well, we'll see. You can come to the garage, Joe. I'm, do, you got, do you have mats in the house? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Got to have mats in the house these days, right? Do you got the tan dude that doesn't have a lower body? No. <laughs> I honestly, I was close to getting one of those when it was quarantined. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's that thing called, man? It's got to have a name. It's got to be the most popular. Well, that's the one that you punch, though. It's like, yeah, a, yeah that's, Google it. You got a phone right there. You know you what, the man? world at your fingertips. I know. Google that it. is literally what I say to me. It's like, oh, if only we had a thousand dollar computer in our pockets. Yeah. That's so punch, punch speaking bomb. of punching bags. Do you would you ever do MMA? Is that ever something that no. you would do? No, not your thing. Holler. Why? She I get this question so often for some reason. I mean, when you're this young and you you're this one, good. Though. There's this aggressive like, hey, could she, could she advance into other parts of martial arts? And MMA is usually the track that, yeah. that most people go on. I mean, even when I did Taekwondo and we had like for competition, like sparring, I mean, I'm all padded up. I got foot gear, hand gear, head gear, and I was still like, oh, I hate this. Yeah. That was the one part I absolutely hated. Getting hit in the face is definitely something that you have to get used to. Go ahead. I like my the, face, you know. <laughs> and, and your brain cells. Uh, Century Bob. Century Bob? Is yeah, okay? the name of it I is know. Century Bob. You know Bob. what he's talking about, right? The torso guy. The It's like yeah. black yeah. and like sand. He's Rubbery. Like, <laughs> he's like, uh, it was uh, like Stretch Armstrong. I, I hate those. Those sand, fill them with water sand. They move too much. Yeah. They're, they're not great. Well, not all of us are as freaky strong as you are. Um, I didn't say it because of that. <laughs> yeah. You know, when I punch that thing, it hurts me. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, so you're tra you're, you live up in Jersey, right? Mm -hmm. Sorry, we call it dir Dirty Jersey. I'm from New York. We call it Dirty Jersey. <laughs> So, <laughs> why can't I pump my own? Some gas? of my best friends are from Jersey. So I just want to okay. pump my own gas. That's all. Yeah. Do they? Say, you still have to pump your own gas in Jersey? No, no, no. you don't. They they, no. they don't allow you to pump your gas. It's weird. Yeah, they do it for us. It's That's, so weird, bro. Yeah, no, I don't used, like it at all. That used to be a thing on Long Island too. It, it feels like, it feels like it's not supposed to happen. <laughs> Pulling up, handing them the money. It feels. It just feels like I'm like a class above somebody, like in a weird way. Like it feels like I'm dehumanizing somebody by having them pump my gas. I used to okay. pump gas. That was I didn't like it. The first jobs. time I experienced that, I was like, that was I thought we, I thought we abolished this. When you're talking about here, like winter, bro? winter time, you know, winter, yeah. snow on the ground. I don't care. I don't want to get out of the car. That's and pump my, my gas. It's Dude, my it's responsibility, man. It's a job. It's a good That's a job. weird way to boost the economy. So, Sophie, are you are you homeschooled? Are you going to school, you know, like a regular kid, you know? So, for two years, I was homeschooled, but I kind of hated it, honestly. Yeah. I felt excluded from everything else, like kind of um, almost like a normal kid. So, yeah. I'm back in public school, high school now, so I got the glory of high school. Yeah. Hold on one second. Bo, when you laugh into the mic, you're covering what she's saying. Mic etiquette, you know, you're always on me. I'm sorry, <laughs> Sophie. I, I gotta. We get be, we beating each other up on. Uh, no, 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 no. But no, but on this, it doesn't always happen. But if we talk on the mic, it covers what you're saying. So I, okay. but just, I'm just reminding. I'm, I'm sorry. So okay. So I, I didn't hear the end of that. I'm sorry. Oh, so I'm just I'm in public school, and I mean, yeah. It's everything that everyone always talks about when it comes to high school, I mean. Yeah. So, I mean, the obvious, the next question is, okay, so now you're in high school. Mm -hmm. How do people react when they find out you do jujitsu? And, I mean, do you talk about it a lot? Like, I, I, I never leave the house without a jujitsu shirt on. <laughs> it's just a thing. I make some t-shirts. We got our sponsor tees. My wife says it looks like jujitsu threw up on me. Do you, are you like that? Or would you be wearing a jujitsu t-shirt to school and then everybody knows? Or do you try to hide it or you just don't care? 
Honestly, when it comes to like t-shirts, I probably wear an Alex B shirt almost every other day. Okay. I wear like a new one, like every other day, just cause I mean, they're super comfy to begin with, but it's school. I mean, I'm not here to dress up or anything. I'm not going to lie. I don't know what an Alex B shirt is. Wait, that's her school. Oh, 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 you, oh your school. school. Oh, that's what yeah. it is. Oh, I didn't know that. I'm sorry. Yeah. This is my main sponsor. And what, what is it called? What does it say? Alex B. Alex B. Oh, okay. Shout out yeah. to them, Clay. I see. Yeah. I, I, okay, I recognize. Well, I could, you know, I couldn't see both sides of it because you're here. Yeah. But I think right, uh, Nikki Rod and and those guys were always in, yeah. right? Don't they have mm-hmm. them? A lot of the guys from a the lot, B team. I see the, the a lot of the guys stuff. from there, and then also a lot of the, ugh, we're getting the gym. Who's the guy who just won MMA that we interviewed not too long ago? That was from uh, from like the Pacific Northwest, and then moved down to Arizona, Texas. He Don't just remember. went. He just Bellator. Don't remember. All right. <laughs> well, anyway, so, oh, Cody Steele. Oh, okay. Cody, yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I don't know how I forgot about that ADCC. Yeah. He's going to be in ADCCs, right? Because he won mm-hmm. He won the, the East Coast Trials up in Jersey, I think, in Atlantic City, wherever that is. Did you do the trials? He, he didn't win it? I don't think so. He came close, though. So. Really? No, I think uh, his, uh, what's his name? Tackett. Tackett. Tackett won yeah, it. Tackett's yeah. always wearing mm-hmm. it. Yeah. Uh, a- so okay. So you don't. You, you you do. You will wear that to school. Yeah. Right. Do people know what it means? That you know. No. Like, that, what does it say on the bottom under there? Oh, uh, it S- says oh, submission grappling. Submission okay. Grappling. So there's never nobody is. Is anybody coming up to you going, "Ooh, your grass submission"? The only thing, like other than my really close friends, like I tell them everything, like. There's something new about jujitsu every day for me, so I'll, I'll run to them and blabber about it. But the rest of school only really knows that I wrestle just because I'm a part of my school team. Okay. Yeah. That's kind of what I'm known for in my school. It's like the girl wrestler for the school because it's only me and another girl. Yeah. So I kind of keep it low key on the quiet side. Yeah. Do you get a lot of girl matches? Now, I mean, I'm, I'm out of the game. You know, it's been like 20 years since high school, so. Before it was like there was one girl and she always had to re- wrestle a guy and they would br- and it was like a big deal and you had to yeah get it was a big deal they were fighting to get on the team it's not like that yeah. anymore right do you have like a lot of girl is there like a whole girl league now like is it separate in high school or is it you still um, sometimes guy sometimes girl so like the wrestling like I don't know like whoever makes the laws for like wrestling they've now put out a new thing where a school has to have a girls wrestling team. Doesn't matter how many people are on it for the girls. <laughs> and that's so dope. They're basically excluded from everything that the boys are doing, which I don't kind of like because, yes, we're asking mm. for like equality in the sport, but we're not asking to be fully separated. We just want some respect because, you know, the guys go to AC for uh, the states, but girls just go to a regular high school. Like that doesn't balance out. So, so you're on, uh, you're on, you have two girls and it's basically you are a two girl team. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So do you, are there a lot of other schools that you get to compete against? And do you travel with the boys to that other school and then you only wrestle the girls or are you completely separate? So what sometimes happen is, is for regular like school meets, like I just go against a different school. I don't usually have a match unless I just get thrown in there to do a forfeit real quick and then walk right back to a chair. That sucks. But yeah, it's really annoying. But the coaches will take the time and look at tournaments, usually like hour, maybe two hours away. Yeah. And they try to keep it local, but it's really hard because there's not a lot of girls in the sport. Mm -hmm. And we'll just drive there. What either in a group or like separate and just compete in an all girls tournament. What do you wrestle at? Uh, the season I just did was one thirteen. So if you do one thirteen, why can't they do like an exhibition match with like the other one fifteen pounder that's not fighting? So because I'm a girl, technically I've made varsity, but the boys come first. So whoever mm-hmm. the boy one fourteen is, because it's different for boys and girls. He'll have the match instead of me. Man, I said dope at the beginning, but now I take it back. I know. This is totally it's not dope. <laughs> Miguel, cue the dramatic music. <laughs> Gentlemen, all men strive for gold in their life, right? 
Gold medals, gold watches, gold everything. However, there is a certain type of man who goes the extra mile. Just like you, Miguel. Oh, thanks. <laughs> he walks with the confidence of an eagle <laughs> and giggles in the face of danger. <laughs> we didn't rehearse this, by the way. He's a big, hairless, winning machine. That's me. That's and when me. he unzips his pants, he sees platinum. <laughs> That's better than gold. <laughs> That's right. Manscaped would like to introduce you to their best and biggest Ultimate hygiene bundle yet, the Platinum Package 4.0, and now that is what is that? That's the package that I just showed you, all the stuff that we're that they're sending out. So we're we're actually getting this. It's Probably very good cool. if you're a yeti. Well, we already got the trimmers. We've already got the weed whacker. So let me go down the line. We so got it. We got it. We got we've it. got the lawnmower 4.0. We don't have the trimmer on the table because both was trimming. It to actually trimming. Trim. trimming. <laughs> we've got the weed whacker, which is the ear and nose hair trimmer. We've got we're getting. Or this is what's in the package, but we're actually getting these pieces that we didn't get. Ultimate premium body wash. Wow. Oh, excuse me. Ultra premium body wash. Ultra premium two in one shampoo and conditioner. Is it all in one bottle? So I do, even though I'm bald, people always ask me, like, do you shampoo your hair? Yes. Every day. Yeah. Shampoo. I don't I usually get something with shampoo and conditioner in it. So this is perfect. The for mixture. Me. Ultra premium deodorant. Deodorant, okay. as my friend Tony would say. Say it again. Deodorant. Who's who's Tony? He's my best friend. Oh, uh, is that the way he says it? That's the way he's always said. So we got the crop preserver, anti anti chafing ball deodorant, which we already got. Got that. the crop reviver ball ton- ball spray toner. It's a mouthful, literally, right? <laughs> <laughs> you, <laughs> right. You uh-huh. use that. You've used the spray. Remember yeah, you said yeah, yeah. You gave yeah. it a little fr- I'm in the front. Glad, I'm in the glad front that, and the back. I'm glad that over four million other men out there. <laughs> We Mars. have we have the continuity of knowing what that smells like, and it's good. <laughs> I'm glad I'm part of that club. Last but not least, they're going to throw in boxers and the it's called the shed travel bag, right? Those travel yeah. bag that we got. So what do you mean, what do you mean, what mean by boxers? Like, like boxer W WB. Bo- oh, boxer, okay, got it. Same boxers not like we got. I thought they were going to ship like a boxer. No, no, no. So we oh, got the God. trimmer, the weed whacker, the ball toner, <laughs> the crop preserver, the bag. And the boxes. That, this is the Did platinum. Is this the platinum? So this is the platinum. So is any other yeah. hardware? No other hardware. No, the hard all the hardware that we got. The, the yeah. whacker, the lawnmower. I got it. So there, there is that other bundle that we talked about that we've. That's what I was we, wondering. Yeah, there's the like uh, they they brought back like an old school shaver. Yeah. that they've had before. So I think we'll uh, we'll probably talk about that on one of the upcoming episodes. Oh. All right, all right. So that looks now, but I know Bo, you've used it. We're not going to get into your full testimonial uh, yet, I'm but right. you've used it. You've used it on your face, right? Yes. Use it on yeah, so. ab- above the waist, right? We're not gonna. We, you want to wait? You want to wait and talk about it on the next episode? Yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah. it's it's okay. a little more technical. But yeah, I have. Well, let me see. Technical. We got. We got. And now, I was. I have, I'll. I'll just leave this. I was extremely pleased. Yeah. Extremely. I was actually surprised. Extremely pleased. You should see the look in his face, people. You should. His eyes are squinting. He says. It. He goes. Yeah, like he's taking a dump. Extremely, what are you about? extremely. What are you talking about? He looks like Robert De Niro. He doesn't look <laughs> like he's. <done. laughs> All right, so mean, we'll we'll definitely funny? talk about it more. I'm I'm still gonna say the weed whacker is my favorite. It's the thing that I'm using the most most often. Yeah, a couple of times a week. Yeah, I'm getting in there, getting the nose hairs. I don't have a lot of ear hair, so I don't have to worry about I that. Use, uh, I wonder what your cat looks a, like. A, this might not be this might not this might not be the proper use for this thing, but the the spray, the little pick me up, um, I kind of take a, I take a little. No offense, we're just gonna lose a whole audience here. I'm, I take a little Persian shower sometimes I, uh, before when I came from work and I go straight to the gym. You know, know. he didn't. Okay, we're gonna leave, we're gonna leave it there because our guest is. Uh, I got you. Is a, uh, a that's why a, I, I gave it a different. I gave it a, I gave it a different name. So sir. we'll uh, that's what we'll we'll let Bo because I know Bo's going to go deep with this. We'll let him. <laughs> we'll let him do his testimonial next week. I, that could oh, that at any moment Bo's testimonial can go sideways. So <laughs> we have Whoa. to do it when it's like an adult male <laughs> yeah, on the show. Yeah, for Whoa. sure. We don't want to. We don't want to lose any. Once we don't want to lose time. all the female wa- uh, 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 fans. And all the Persians that don't they? <laughs> that Miguel, that, you just insulted That's the Persian community. Persians, what did you yeah, call that? We, we got We're gonna have to cut that out. Said, really? No. That's what did you say? No. A Persian shower. Everybody knows a about Persian shower. Oh yeah. boy, that's that's offensive. Is it? Yeah. Oh, okay. My now I, I, it's, <laughs> it's, it's not offensive. This is, this is gonna be so hard. It's they gonna go it. even worse. I I know that people used to say 
Puerto Rican shower. Yeah. I was talking to my I've daughter the many. other day. You're we Puerto Rican, about, though. Yes. I've yeah. taken we were talking about like racist things and preconceived notions about different races. We were, we we're talking about it. She's going away to school. We're talking about yeah. these things. She's going to, you know, we're already yeah. in a diverse community in South Florida. So I was telling about that. I'm like, yeah, it was fun. I used to hear people Just, say Puerto Rican shower. Hey, would you take a Puerto Rican shower? And I used to take such offense to it. Yeah. And now I'll be at home. I didn't know you could offend I'll, a civilization I'll, that doesn't exist anymore. I'll be at home and I'll say, well, you, uh, I'll address that in a second. And I'll say, my wife, my, even my wife would be like, did you shower? I'm like, no, nah, I just did a Puerto Rican shower, which is yeah. just deodorant. I feel know, that. Wipe up and let's go, because we got to go. I was in the Army for eight I've years. But many, I used to take dude. such offense to it. Now it's just like, it's self-deprecating, and I just think it's it's, it's funny. funny. I don't know that everybody's going to find that funny. I've but by the way, Persians are Iranians. That's Persian. That's if you nah, speak to bro, an Iranian, they I, I, I worked with uh, and was friends with. A young man who was Persian back in the day. Yeah. And back in the day. He would say Persian instead what, of like Iranian. He changed. Before, Persian. before Christ. People still say Persian. That's offensive. He's trans to say. ethnic. I don't know. I, we <laughs> Whatever, might, man. We might have to cut this whole I thing out. I don't no. mean I don't mean any offense to anybody. I hope we don't lose Manscaped. I hope no. the owner of, of Manscaped isn't Persian because you might have just ruined that whole thing. <laughs> hey buddy, sorry, buddy. Oh, All, right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Get twenty percent off and free shipping with code JJD twenty uh-huh. at manscaped.com. That's twenty percent that? off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Use code JJD twenty. It's time for you. It's time you enjoyed the finer things in life and get yourself a platinum package for your platinum package. There you go. <laughs> hey, what about that shipping though? Anywhere in the world? Free shipping anywhere in the world. In the world. In the world. I, really I people, clarified that with them. I want so, people to test in the this world? out. I want people to test this. Really? Yeah. In the world? I want somebody who lives in the in, world. Who lives in like anywhere. Djibouti. <laughs> if you live up there. Hey, listen. In Africa, get, I, if they got an order for from Djibouti, Africa, like, we gotta get it. That's me. We're gonna fast. That's me. Gonna if you send, get that? That's me. <laughs> we're gonna send a film crew with you to see who that where it's going. I'm over there. I think in Djibouti. A, I think there's a naval base. No, it's Sounds funny. Thing. We're gonna we're gonna send a camera crew in Djibouti. Yeah. I have a friend. into into Djibouti. Uh, listen, we gotta we we need to get back to hey, the show. Not, we have a get we have a guest. I we know. have a guest waiting. We gotta get back to the I show. I thought this was the middle. No, let's get back to it. <laughs> let's do this. <laughs> Thank you to DD214 Fightwear, gear for patriotic rollers. Visit their website, dd214bjj.com, and get 15% off your online order with code JJD. And check them out on Instagram at dd214 underscore fightwear. Thank you to Feito IT and AV, specializing in commercial and residential automation, security cameras, CCTV, POS, and more. Check them out at feitoitav.com or call 305-428-2515 and let them know the dummy sent you. Thank you to Neutral Zone CBD, a combat family-owned company that supports athletes and the people who love them. Neutral Zone strives to deliver clean CBD products for sports recovery in gummies, lotions, balms, roll-ons, and more. After a competition, a hard rolling session, or a tough day on the job, Neutral Zone has a product designed to help you reduce inflammation, increase cell rejuvenation, and may even help with aging joints. Visit NeutralZoneCBD.com and get 25% off your order with code JJD. And follow them on Instagram too, at MyNeutralZone. Jiu-Jitsu's favorite monthly subscription box has now joined the Jiu-Jitsu Dummies podcast. The BJJ box is delivered to your door filled with premium jiu-jitsu and grappling apparel, equipment, supplements, supplies, snacks, and more. The crew at the BJJ box find the best in the world of jiu-jitsu and guarantee every box to be worth more than the cost. Each box includes four to seven items you're going to love. Visit thebjjbox.com and use code JJD10 to get $10 off your very first box. And give them a follow on Instagram at the BJJ Box. All of us here at the Jiu-Jitsu Dummies would like to thank the entire crew over at Flow and Roll for their tremendous support. They're renowned for their incredible t-shirt designs and they've got something for everyone. Flow and Roll quickly rose up to become the premier custom apparel provider for academies, big or small, throughout the United States. Shoot them an email about your custom order, flowandroll at gmail.com, and they'll be more than happy to get you hooked up. Check them out on Instagram at flow underscore n underscore roll for samples of their gi and no gi kits. They conveniently offer flexible payment options too. Head over to flowandroll.com for more details, and while you're there, pick up a Jujitsu Dummy signature tee. 
now exclusively at flowandroll.com. And remember, you'll get 20% off your online purchase of t-shirts, rash guards, or geese with code JJD. Special thanks to George Hernandez, Claims Adjuster. Have you experienced damage in your residential or commercial property in the states of Florida or Texas from flood or fire, storms, theft and vandalism, even sinkholes, just to name a few? Don't get stressed out dealing with your insurance provider. Call George Hernandez today and let the professionals get you the most compensation possible. Visit HernandezClaims.com or call 305-712-6751 to get help now. And stay in touch with them on Instagram at HernandezClaims. You, so have you re- you've wrestled boys? Forget about jujitsu yeah. for a second. You've wrestled boys in this mm-hmm. in school. Yeah. Against other schools. Yeah, I only had one match against a boy though. Okay. Do you train with the boys? Yeah. Do they, mm-hmm. they they do put you when you're training school? Yeah. yeah my main training partner's a dude. Do you wreck those guys? One boy, I do. <laughs> one boy. Oh, good. Yeah. Wrestlers. Yeah. Wrestling's oh. a different animal. Man. Are you like? Are you tempted to like throw some like? I'm just gonna. How do, this how do women right even now. make it to? I'm the gonna let him know. He might beat me, but I'm gonna sub- I'm gonna submit him and oh, let him know. Go to your back on purpose, and then just <laughs> when he drives Honestly, a half, do a normal plata. When plata. I do wrestling, like jujitsu, <laughs> never in my mind other than like different downs. Like I never like if they go for a double, like I never want to wrap a guillotine. Like it's really weird. Yeah. yeah. Even though you kind of really could. I could. I because could you could grab a chicken wing and then you could do like an <laughs> arm in. You could do an arm in guillotine, but just don't lock your arms if their knees touch the ground. I should try that. I should try it. Yeah. <laughs> or you could go, you could technically go arm in like Anaconda or Dars and then, <laughs> and then go backwards to take them down for the pin and then, and then come out on top and then drive a half. You just gave me a new, new wrestling move to try out. <laughs> yeah. I do like so- the grave jigger from wrestling. What's that? The, the grave digger when you get is. like a Russian arm bar and then they pull away from you and you let them and then you like figure for their own arm and you throw them in front of you. Weirdo. Um, so like do you bar. do you expect to like graduate from like you do you want to go through or with the progression in jujitsu does that put you in a place where may, I, maybe I'm gonna have to be homeschooled so I can travel more or so that I can take more competitions? Is that like something that goes through your mind? I mean, for school, like once I graduate, the only reason that I would honestly be going to college is if I get recruited for wrestling, Mm -hmm. which cross my fingers, I hope that happens. But I mean, jujitsu and wrestling is basically my life. So once college is done, I'm kind of off trying to own my own school with my dad. Okay. Business so, management. It, so it's not necessarily really worrying about competing and traveling and... Yeah, like, I'll obviously do that just to, like, keep active and everything. Like, I love competing. I love, like, the hype about it and everything and winning, obviously. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I love teaching. That's, like, my biggest passion. I That's good. And, and don't sleep on the education. Listen, you know... Uh, oh, yeah. You know, it's... You know, to own a school, you know, you could be way ahead of the game if you understand business and, you know, mm-hmm. aspects of accounting yeah. and, you know, business you don't, development. Yeah. You know, you don't just, I think a lot of, excuse me, a lot of gyms do close because it's a, a black belt opening a gym for the first time without understanding any parts mm-hmm. of the business side or, okay, I'm a black belt, open the doors and you expect this rush of students to come in and then it doesn't happen, yeah. regardless of, of your name. You know, you've got to advertise. You've got to just let people know you're there. I think that I think that's a common mistake and why a lot of gyms close. It's like building and they will come doesn't work you in would, this world. You would know for sure. Yeah, I mean, that, yeah, I mean, that's I your work, world. Yeah, I work with with gyms. You know, it's it's amazing what they think will work or what they want to do, and you have to really I have to guide them and tell them like, I know what you want to do. At least they're passionate. And and, and seeing like <laughs> my no own gym, my own gym, the way he advertises without going into it, I know what he does. And it works. So not only am I in the marketing yeah. world, but now I've seen it successful. A gym do it successfully. Mm-hmm. Follow a marketing program that works, and and you know, he's bursting at the steam sometimes. You know, with the with promotions, the kids on the mat, Damn. it's just ridiculous. You just you just got you just got Milton's two cents on this, which I think is <laughs> the valuable two cents. Hey, can I just clear the air real sure, quick? Sure, sure. So I don't know how Cody didn't get first because he had such an easy bracket. You know, Cade Rotulo won first. Okay. How do you, yeah, I mean, you know, yeah. and then William Tackett. So yeah. I don't know. So 
now you mentioned those names and I, and I think about one championship and, and like a lot of uh, uh, male and female jiu-jitsu players are getting invited overseas. Would you ever do something like that? Would you ever travel internationally to, you know, start to make the big bucks? If I have the money. Yeah. <laughs> well, they'll yeah. pay, you, know, you it, get paid to do they'll, that. They'll pay you to come. They'll pay you and pay, you know, to, they'll fly you out. And and, and you can win and a 50K you bonus like yeah. uh, Danielle Kelly did. Yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah that I was mean, amazing. I've been, I've been asked to fly to like, not outside of the country, but pretty far. And I mean, I just haven't been able to because I mean, I'm not rich. You know, I don't come from a rich family. It's so like you're at your expense. They want you to yeah. come out at your expense. Yeah. Mm. Well, yeah. let's, uh, we're saying in a favorable environment. Like if somebody like then, won championship. Yeah. Then I would hundred percent travel. That's cool. Now you mentioned Trinity before, mm-hmm. right? I, you guys are friends. Yes. Do you train together now? Are you? So because she's pretty far from us, she's almost two hours away mm-hmm. from her school. The only reason or the only way I kind of see her is if like she's throwing something at her gym or I'm throwing at something at my gym. The like, last time I saw her was when she did the seminar. And I mean, I saw her for a good amount of time, but I definitely miss her a lot. <laughs> yeah. You guys have trained together at length though before. Yeah. Okay. All right. And, and I think that's kind of like how, I think you like messaged us around that time we were having her on. Were you, oh, okay. Were you surprised that we extend you, that I extend you the inf- invitation? Did you? Yeah. You were I, like, "Hey, I'd love to be on one day." I'm like, "Well, let's do it." You know, and <laughs> and thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. Right. Well, I mean, it's that easy. And you know, when you look at you know, you start to look, you know, start to you know, look at your record, and it's and, an interesting you know, story. Yeah, you know, look, wow, you know, there's you, you've got a lot going on, and it's uh, you know, we we do have a lot of uh, you know younger players that that listen to the show. I know because I get. The messages, I'm the one that's usually answering the messages. So uh, it's, you know, it, watch, I'm going to get like a ton of kids now. This like, is, hey, is, we want to be on the show. This is what the people want. I, res- I respect it. I mean, it's where we're always looking for, you know, a new story. We're looking for something interesting. And Well, you've yeah. said it a million times. The point of this show is we're the jujitsu dummies. Like we don't, it's it's easy. <laughs> it's easy to to be the show that always has the number one champion, the number yeah. one. Never one. We, ne- I, we don't really even yeah. go after, you know, like we're not like chasing Gordon Ryan around. Yeah, or, no. You know, it's like, we're looking those for things good will stories. happen. Yeah, I mean, we want a good, I mean, we'll, a good story, we'll interesting story. And it's nice to talk to somebody like, maybe not everybody knows. And, and then like exposing them to, you know, a different audience. It's, and you guys are good. the future of jujitsu as well. Yeah. I mean, in, I mean, who, you know, you got, again, Rotulo. <laughs> And Mika Galvao at the finals yeah. of Worlds on their kids. Okay, I know, yeah, they're 18 and 19 year old black belts. It was both of their first black belt debut, right? Out of all of those black belts in that very competitive weight class. And yeah. you got an 18, 19 year old, two debut guys final. So it's like the future is that's what, hey man, that's three years for you, you know? Yeah. World class, so- numero uno. Tell me about your life outside of jujitsu. No pressure, no pressure. No pressure. Do you have hobbies? What do you, what do you do? Um, so I'm really big into like hair cosmetology. So Me if- too. Me too. I'm <laughs> big into uh, hair. <laughs> so um my plan for high school is to do the last two years of my high school is cosmetology. And then I love painting. Really? Anytime I can get a canvas in front of me, I'm always painting. Okay. So, nice. Yeah, I'm a big outdoorsy person. On my- I really grow up with a lot of electronics. So I'm always outside, either like playing with my little sister, playing with my dog. So what would you do if, if you weren't doing jujitsu or well, what are you going to go to college for? Let's, let's, let's say that. So cosmetology in high school, but what do you see? Uh, like what courses would you take or what do you think you'd major in in, in college? If you get the scholarship. I'm if probably- you get the wrestling scholarship. <laughs> yeah. Um, probably business. Yeah. I yeah, mean smart. everyone always says like take a business course. It's very, you know, it, it could really like help you in the future. So I mean, I've kind of always listened to that advice and I'll probably yeah. do business. 
You're welcome. Coachable. I'm, I'm glad I was able to give you that. Advice. Coachable. I appreciate it. <laughs> you know, funny enough, my you know my daughter's going to college this uh, this coming August. Congratulations. And thank you. And she does. She's going in undecided. She doesn't know what she wants to do. And I told her, you're never going to go wrong with taking some type of business course because no matter what you want to do, if there's a time in your life that you want to do that, like open your own business and do that thing, you're now going to have that in your back pocket. And mm-hmm. it, it, tra- it travels well across different disciplines. It looks good. I think even if you just show up with a resume for like whatever it is that you're doing yeah. and it has some sort of business thing on there, it just, it's one of those things that just looks good. Yeah. And that's, that's nine tenths of the job right there is getting your foot in the door. In my right. personal opinion. So we have some, we got, I, I think I chose, I, I had a few emailed to me as well, but I think I chose almost all the ones that were online. So I have some listener questions for you. Uh, okay. I'm not sure if you'll know these people. I, th- I There's one that I know that you're going to know. Uh, I'm gonna. I'll ask that one last. Let me see uh, if I get their full name. Um, oh, remember this doesn't have, this doesn't have uh, his name, David, or D A V O T I D, devoted. Really devoted. <laughs> How long has Sophie been training for, and what's her long term goal? So kind of talked tra- about that a little bit, but go ahead. Yeah, so I've been training for five and a half years. So kind of on the shorter end and my long-term goal, I basically said this, but to own a gym with my dad. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Hey, that's a uh, 33% of your life at, at this <laughs> yeah, current right? time. So it's not really, that's a lot. It's a third of your life. And, yeah. the, and the first, and the first third, you were learning how to walk and eat and not choke on stuff. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we have Donald, Twi- uh, Donald Twyford. Donald Twif- Twifford. I can hear you. I can Again, hear tell you. Me, you can tell me if you know these names, if they're familiar to you. Uh, okay. When you were younger, what did your folks do to keep you going to the gym? Now, let me add on. He says, my kid is seven. He goes, or they go three to four times a week. But I know soon he's going to be giving me the, I don't want to go. Mm-hmm. What are some of the things that worked when you were younger that your parents did that what worked to get you to the gym? Honestly, if my my dad would always ask me, all right, so if you want to go to jiu-jitsu, and my answer was always yes. I never had to have my parents force me to go. I just did it on my free will. I mean, it's a sport that I honestly love. I have joy doing it. Yeah. And, you know, it's not like a stressful thing where it's like, all right, I got to get up, go to jiu-jitsu now. Like, no, nothing like that. But, I mean, with his kids, who who this person is, don't force your kid to go to jujitsu because then you'll just make them hate it. I've seen a lot of parents do that too, especially teaching kids classes. You see a lot of that and kids just being miserable. So don't force your kids to do it. If they like it, they like it. If they don't, switch into a new sport. So I'm going to ask Miguel, how does that play into the what you just said before about while you're under my roof, you're yeah. you're going to learn jiu-jitsu. Or you're you're going gonna to learn how jiu-jitsu. to defend yourself in any yeah. kind of way. I don't. As soon as she's old mm-hmm. enough to learn to, to handle a weapon, which she's almost there, we're going to start. <laughs> how, old is she, how old is she now? She's nine. She's nine. Yeah. At 12, 13, 14, if she's like, that, I don't want to do jiu-jitsu anymore. I just don't want to do any, this. Anymore? You can't you can't afford two hours out of a whole entire week. That's the kind. I, my so only you're, 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 my, my only going. deal my only deal with her is she only has to train twice a week. Okay. And 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 trust me, sometimes it's once a week, and sometimes she doesn't go. I'm not like a a huge dick about yeah. it. Yeah, I'm not like that. But I do. I'm teaching her more of a discipline thing because like discipline is freedom in a way. Yeah. So it's like I completely agree with you. Like I don't. If my daughter's like I don't feel good, or if she's pretending to not feel good. And I know she, like, for real, but, like, if she's pretending to not feel good, then I understand that that's a really, like, I really, really don't want to go. Yeah. And I get that. And I know she's going to get older, and I know her interests are going to change. But the point that I'm trying to teach is that she needs to be able to protect herself, Mm -hmm. okay? Because I'm not always going to be there. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And I I also don't always want to be there. You know what I'm saying? She's got to be able to be by herself. Yeah. You know? And, like, that would make me more proud than anything else. And... So far, I feel like that's how I feel. Okay. Yeah, but she goes twice a week. All right. It's one of we. So of our four questions, we asked one. I'm not going to go into one of them that we we've kind of addressed a, a, a bit already. Mm-hmm. 
But our last question, I know you know this person, is the Teriyaki oh, Terra yeah. BJJ. <laughs> His, I like that name. Is that a, a, a <laughs> is that a girl or a guy? That's a guy. <laughs> is it an adult or is it a child? It's an adult. <laughs> He's an adult. Okay. <laughs> I like. This. I just try to. I like to get the visual. You know, uh, adult male. His question is: Is a hot dog a sandwich? No. No. Hot dog is a sandwich. Hot dog is not a sandwich. No. Hot, hot, dog hot dog is a sandwich. No, it's not. Pull up. Hot pull it up. It's not a sandwich. No, it's, it's a, a taco. taco. There's no. Nope. In, in, the, in the dictionary, it is considered a sandwich. All right. Where it's does that come taco. from? Obviously, there's there's something more there. I like so teriyaki. You, where, where does that come from? I actually have no clue. Oh. I actually, <laughs> on your guys' page, I read that comment. I was saying, no, it's him. I'm like, where did he get this? He just question? wanted a free T-shirt. That's why. Yeah. He wants a T-shirt. That's a great a question. Mug. That's a good question. That's and I'm, a pretty silly I'm, dude. I'm on so Team I'm Teriyaki. Uh, what? I'm, <laughs> Go ahead, say again. I said I'm on Team Teriyaki. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. I. Uh, I don't think a hot dog is not a hot dog. A hot dog is is a hot dog. A hot it's, dog yeah, is a sandwich. Not a sandwich. You don't say. Hey, hold on. I got an example. I've for never you. gone anywhere and hey. said, oh, "Listen, I want a sandwich. Hey. Can you put a hot dog on hey. that?" Uh, yeah, senor, I agree. senor. All right. Is a pit bull a dog? Yes. Is a chihuahua yeah. a dog? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, a ham sandwich is a sandwich, and a hot dog is a sandwich because that's what the dictionary says. No, but that's that's just yeah, different. Yeah, but a ham sandwich has the word sandwich in it. You a never hot- put. <laughs> you yeah, but put, it's a type of sandwich. It, I think it's because it's not on a sandwich. What about a sub? Bread. What it's about a, a sub? It's not on a sandwich bread. What about a sub? A sub's not cut all the way. Oh, what a about sub a isn't hero? a sandwich. A sub is a sub. It's, it's a, a hero. submarine a sandwich. Yeah. Mm, uh, okay. Oh, come, come on. That is. Hot dog is not a sandwich. I don't know, hot okay. dog. You're, and, allowed, and, you're allowed to oh, feel that. You want way. me to blow your mind? A hamburger is not a sandwich either. <laughs> is a, a hamburger a sandwich? It's a sandwich. It's yes. a hamburger. It's in a class. It's in between. Its that's technically yeah, a okay, sandwich. Yeah, no, okay. But that's what I'm saying. We're talking about like all dogs used to be wolves. If you go you know to I mean? if you go to a, a food truck yeah. and said, you don't have uh, to say it. Bro. I'll take a. Uh, you know, Ground I didn't want a hot dog sandwich. Let me tell you something about Milton real quick. When Milton tells you. What his Instagram handle is, he has to say at. All right, right. That's the way you do it. You don't it? gotta do it. Yeah. No, it's implied. I mean, it's the same way you got when somebody asks you what your website is. You say www. You don't. No, I'm just, I know. Right. <laughs> if I go up to a place that only sells tacos, I'm not even gonna ask for a taco. I'm gonna say two beef, one chicken. I don't even say taco. Is a taco? A, go, is a I taco go, a sandwich? A taco. Oh, I'll, taco is not a sandwich. But all Mexican food is the same. <laughs> and they're tricking you. It's the same seven ingredients in That's different true. formats. That's true. Chalupa is just a fried taco. A burrito is just a folded taco. We should go get some tacos after this. Or whatever. You hungry? Yeah. <laughs> but all I'm saying is I'm going by what if we can't if we can't trust Merriam Webster, then who can we trust? Well, thank you, Teriyaki. I'll call him Teriyaki. Team, I don't know who team Teriyaki. What's, his re- what's this person's real name? Why you put him ben. out like that? Ben? Yep. Thank All you right. for the thank you for the question, Ben. Big Ben, always on Very time. Very enlightening, always on time. All right, so we're gonna get into. Uh, I always say I'm not gonna call the speed round. One, I don't know. I, I haven't named question? it anything else. We're gonna go into our speed round. Can I ask the one question? Oh, I sure. Wanted to ask her? Yeah, go ahead. Hey, uh, so you teach kids classes, and you are a kid. Mm-hmm. What's what's some advice you would give parents, even if the kid wants to go to jujitsu or doesn't want to go to jiu-jitsu, just general advice? Because I know you all talk, and and you're in the game real deep. So, like, what advice do you have for parents of jujitsu kids in general? Whatever you want to say. So, if they're out of class, do not coach on the sideline. That is one of my biggest pet peeves ever. So, how do you handle that? Because we were talking about that and how I know how, like, I had to handle it way back in the day when I had a parent, like, following his kid. It was a four-year-old. It was Like, he wouldn't just let him on the mat he would like come walk out on the mat now i'm like a white belt training doing a kids class i didn't know what to say to him what do you say to a parent like get off the mat you know how do you tell them to like shut up and be quiet or do you, or you kind of can't death stare so there's usually <laughs> death two stare way i handle it i i'll either like go to my dad and tell him or the owner and then they'll handle it just cuz it's a little weird having a 15 year old talk to a parent and be like Yo, you can't be doing this anymore. Yeah. And they usually don't expect it. So I'll usually get the owner or my dad or another coach and make them talk. Or I give them this look, almost like a, okay, now 
stop talking, please. Mm-hmm. Like when I, because it always happens when I'm teaching their kid in front of them and they'll just like talk over me. So I'll look towards them and like stare at them a little. Yeah. They usually, they're like, okay, now. Uh-oh, she's going to come. She's going to come. You don't, you don't get a me. discount. You don't get a discount for you teaching. Yeah. You still got to pay the same amount. Let me do my job. How about let's ex- <laughs> let's extend that to competition. Have you ever been? Do you have you taken kids to competition where you've you've been the coach on the sidelines? So I've only done that like once, maybe. Did you like it? Um, was it fun? It was honestly. I get really into it. Yeah, me too. I did it for the first time this weekend. <laughs> I did it. I did it a couple of times as again my coach, my the owner's like assistant coach. Mm-hmm. Um, we did do a couple of new breeds, and back then they would let they would like leave us alone, like sit on the mat beat at the edge of the mat yeah. and let two coach. Like a lot of times these, they're like one coach, right? Well, they would let us and we would just go. I, that was the most fun that I had. I, I would tell yeah. the kids, I'm like, we're going to like, just listen to us. We're going to tell you exactly what to do. Like, like a chess piece, you know, we're going to tell go here, put your foot. If you listen to us, if you could look at us even better, if you know, without like looking away, it, that was like one of the, I, I look back, I saw a picture came up in my feed the other day of us on the podium with the yeah. kids that was one of my most favorite times ever in any jujitsu setting. It's dope. Yeah, man. It's dope. It was awesome. It's I, a good, it's a good thing. So do you, do you, so you did it the once, do you, do you, do you have the parents yelling and screaming on the side? Oh, like, well, yeah. Instruction, you know, you can't stop that. Yeah. I'm always screaming something stupid. Yeah. Yeah. I'm always like super stupid. I'm like, stand him up. This is boring. A hot dog is a sandwich. <laughs> hot dog is a sandwich. <laughs> so is a burger. <laughs> All right, so we're going to get into our speed round. A horrible name for a segment, but because we're going to elaborate on these. So, I, again, I know we talked about we it, should. but we're going to go down our list. What's your preference, gi or no gi? No gi. No okay. way. Take down or pull guard? Both. Okay. Oh, both. Of both them. Not both pull them. guard. Both of them. Tell me more. So, I know, like you said, you've talked about, we, we saw your, your fight. Didn't you t- more of a guard puller, though? She said until she learned wrestling. Until you learn wrestling. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. I yeah. That. I'll always guard pull if wrestling isn't working at that time. So, I mean, I always got both options. Dude, yeah. That is like such a next level answer at its most simplest form. <laughs> What's your go-to takedown? What do you like? Single. Single leg? Yep. All right. Respect. Hell yeah. Run the pipe or high no, up or high up and it. trip. Yeah. I always bring it up to my armpit and then. <sighs> Nice. Oh, man. All right. So do you watch jujitsu? And I want to clarify this. Like, do you watch, like, are you glued to flow grappling on a Friday night when they're, oh, yeah. when you're at home and they're in like Texas or across the country? You're watching. It's a fan. I'm always watching. Are you watching every, all three hours of fights? Yep. <laughs> do you watch UFC yeah. fights too? Uh, nah. UFC, I used to a lot more, but I mean, that's a fighting thing. I'm not really into it. <laughs> yeah, I got gotcha. you. Are you? Do you study tape when you're gonna? If you have a super fight, are you studying tape on the other person? Um, I kind of leave that up to my coaches. Okay. I kind of like if you ever ask my dad, I'm like, don't, don't even tell me their name. Don't tell me anything about really? them. I just kind of like to go in there, like, all right, play like, your game, match. You know. Okay. I think once I get more like high level and going to like the big tournaments, then I'll start doing that more. But for like the more of like the lower level tournaments, I'm just kind of like, I just walk in there. I think that's wise at a higher level. I think the most information you could get mm-hmm. without it messing with your uh, psychology for the sport, mm-hmm. it's the best for you, especially if somebody's a specialist too, you know, you got to, you yeah. wouldn't, you wouldn't go into, you know, a grappling match with like, let's say a Rotulo brother and then not know that if they're letting you pass the side control so they could bugger you, you know, like yeah. that type of thing. That's knowledge is power at that point. Stay in half guard. Mm-hmm. Miguel, mm-hmm. you take the next question. Who is your favorite competitor to watch? Ooh. If I had to choose, I'll do girl boy. Fair. So Dale. I can't just pick one because for me, that's just not possible. If I had to choose like a boy, I would probably choose Keith Rikorian. Not only just because like he's a friend of mine, but I mean, his matches are insane. Okay. Like 
the thing that he did for combat jujitsu. I mean, his matches were like phenomenal, in my opinion. Is he the guy that just knocked somebody out the other day? No. That's that on him? Was, I feel like that was Damien. I forget. I, I, maybe it's an older video, but I just saw some. No, no, no. It's recent. About this yeah, it's yeah. recent. Yeah. For the combat, it was Damien. So you like combat jujitsu? I like watching it. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's you know what, the that's follow-up what, question. That's what I meant. <laughs> that's what I meant. I know you already said you're not into getting this messed up. Okay. Yeah. You're into cosmetology. It's the money maker, it. you know? Come on. <laughs> so we know what... Uh, we, we ask uh, the she question... Didn't, she didn't oh, say the oh, girl. I'm sorry. She Go didn't ahead. say the oh, girl. The, my apologies. Oh, yeah. For girl, probably Danielle Kelly. She's... Trinity's one. Yeah. I mean, there's so many to choose from. Dude, Danielle uh, Kelly looks like she would 100% suck at any combat sport. Like physically, she's and yeah. and just does amazing jujitsu. Yeah, mm-hmm. like it doesn't even look right. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, what I mean like is that- like she'll get into a position and you're like, where's she going with that? Yeah, and it's, she's got different paths. She's got very creative paths between. She's always submission hunting, which is always yeah. awesome to watch. It's not like a, oh, I'm gonna get to side control to hold you here for a little bit. It's like if she's in side control, she's trying to like break your elbow somehow. It's our tiny jeans. Yeah. Uh, just <laughs> by the way, uh, if anybody knows Danielle, we've been trying to get in touch with her to come on the show. She knows Danielle. Do you know? Do you know her personally? Did, oh yeah, we're yeah. like best friends. Are you being? Are you serious? Or are you messing around? Yeah. No, she's not messing oh, around. Oh really? Yeah. Tell her to answer her damn I, her <laughs> instant messages, her DMs. Uh, now, actually, our our, uh, our Brit Brit who reached out to you has been trying to reach her and to get her on the show. She's got but. 50K to spend, bro. Leave her I alone. don't know <laughs> if, you know, maybe we're not, you know, big enough for her now, but no. After this, I'm on it. I'll uh, contact yeah. her let, anyway. let her know. We appreciate Send her it. A mess, open up a chat. That's but, business. Uh, That's we business. Really, we, uh, no lie. I mean, we have have tried to, to reach her. I don't think that She's responded to a I've, lot of my messages. I've, yeah, she hasn't responded to. Oh, <laughs> to our, but I, I never asked Brit's about the mine. podcast. Yeah. So like sometimes Brit will reach out to somebody who I might say like, "Hey, I'd really like to have them on the show." She Brit Brit does her own thing. I I only tell her every once in a while like, "Hey, I'd like to have this person on or this person back on." With you, you had reached out. I looked at your stuff. I'm like, "Oh, yeah. Yeah, let's do it." Got I it. sent it to her. I said, "You know, reach out." Uh, and I don't know that I, I think I asked her about Danielle cause she's like, yeah, I've messaged her a bunch of times. She doesn't respond, you know, <laughs> tear, tear emoji, but, hey. uh, yeah, I'd like to have her on, I, I, you know, especially we're talking, we're talking a lot about one championship lately. It would be really nice to get her perspective. Dude, it'd be so dope to yeah. just go over there and watch one of those things. Yeah. I, the energy looks so nice over there. Just by the way, this and is the, a side and note the for food. I have, I, I do have permission to go to Vegas, to go to ADCC. All right. Just so you know, cause well. Are you, um, you going to be mysterious so about this? Mysterious I'll, I'll, I'll do this with, with, we probably could have saved this for, for later, but. <laughs> we'll uh, save it for later. Sean, uh, <laughs> one of our sponsors is sponsoring ADCC Flow and Roll, and okay. he's got like 20 tickets. Yeah. And we've talked about, he might do some giveaways. I'm, I hope I'm not, everyone's going to call him for tickets now. Yeah. Um, and we talked about maybe like going out, like if he was going to set up, we would drive out with him, right? Yeah. We talked to him about my, it. I told you my hall pass I don't, already I signed. don't know that he's going to go, but I've talked to him and said, hey, would you, let's. Let's get on a plane and go. Yeah. Instead of driving with you know bringing the shirts and, and gear, I I threw it out there. I don't know. Dude, like, we could do we a gotta, pod. I mean, it's got. What if we fill up a, a U-Haul mm. pod and then have the pod delivered ahead of time? What do you mean? A pod. You know the pods. Oh, okay. You could get like U-Haul has pods now. You gotta, yeah, but I don't know that he could be without his gear because he's also got to fill orders and other you know online orders and things like that. I don't. know. That's him. That's Dale, a conversation. I don't happening. know. But I I would want to go. I I that's an awesome opportunity. That's I want to awesome. go. I have permission. So do I. From my wife to to bro, we to got we got families to take care of. Yeah, you. No. It's not asking permission, but, but I would, it's like, like it's I told him, like I would go to you know I'm not going to go to hang out in Vegas, but if if we weren't going with him driving with him because he was going to set up, we yeah. could go. I then probably take my wife and talk to you about taking my, my hall taking pass, wives. My hall pass is signed at work and at home. All right, cool. I don't know. I got a very supportive uh, family at work and a very supportive family at home. Okay, so. Who would you like to fight next? Anyone. Honestly. Anyone? No call Anyone outs. Are are you somebody Did that, you say that somebody does call outs? Belt? Yeah. I get a, like a lot of people and or like promoters just because like I'm like kind of known locally in Jiu-Jitsu world. So they're always like, Oh, you've been doing this for a while, you're pretty good. You can go against a purple almost brown belt. And like 
I don't want to start off my blue belt journey like that because when I got my blue, I haven't done any tournaments as a blue belt. So I kind of want to take a chill pill and just kind of like go against someone like my level. So especially since it'll be against women now and not girls. So yeah, it's a different story. Have you done any fight yeah. to wins? And I'm sorry, I don't know the answer to that already. Have you done any fight to wins? I have not. Yeah. Oof. No. Seth, what's up? Yeah, Seth, man. Um, <laughs> You need Le- a, legit, need a I mean, I've gotten a, an occasional message of somebody that's been on and said, oh, I got a call after the podcast for this thing, or I got a message. Oh, that's dope. You never, you never really? know. I mean, we yeah. have, um, you know, I, I always say, we haven't I talked about know. Jacob in a he long time. Know. Jacob the Bull, I mean, we, you know, yeah. we set him up with with Jits, uh, with, uh, Jits King when they started doing more like that. Dude's a monster, he did a super man. fight. He's freaking, he's amazing. How oh, that wow. kid is not on on more radars, I, I don't know. But he did the podcast. Okay, and we, yeah, but we, we hooked him up directly. We said, kid, hey. Hey, Jits Kings, come on. You know, you got to He's swimming to in a sea of sharks, bro. He trains at AOJ. Yeah. You yeah. know? With, so think about everybody. Cole, right? Cole, Cole Abate just won Worlds at Purple debut, yeah. mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. And, and you know, you have, uh, what is it, Durante just got, or Dar- Darpa, Darpa, whatever his name is. He's I really, I watch all of his videos, and I can't pronounce his name. Like, that dude's a monster, you know? Like, AOJ right now, like, top-level IBJJF yeah. guys are... And and that only tells you how good Jacob is. So if you don't, so if you don't have somebody that you would you know that you'd like to fight, who's somebody famous? Uh, oh, you've already f- trained with some famous people, but wh- who's somebody famous that you'd like to train with? Um, because it is hard to find people my size because I am on the tinier side. I'm only like 120. When I was at Studio Trinity and Danielle were my number one training partners, so I would say them. Okay. Do you do um like what are they called one on ones like uh That's a super fight. Do, no 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 I'm not training. Like Oh. Oh, personals. Like a, do you ever do like one on one sessions like do you ever like there are people like who would private? pay not only like privates, I'm sure like kids yeah, might pay you pri- like a private. Do you ever do privates with higher level uh competitors? Um I actually don't. Yeah. No. I don't think I've ever done one of them. I've had like a, a we've, we've had a couple of like higher like high level black belts that like hell yeah I still do privates. We're talking about AOJ Toma Alroy who's from Israel. He comes to the U.S. He'll like you know kind of do like I don't want to call it a tour, but he'll you know go around the U.S. and go to different competitions, try to get some to some things that are you know happening at the same time. And then he would go out to o- AOJ and 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 you know and do privates with the owners. Yeah. I can't say both of the owners. I forget which. The Mendez brothers? Which, which, I forget which Mendez brother he usually goes in and does uh, uh, privates with. But he's just like, that's absolutely. so dope. He's like, that's part of my, like, he, like budget. And yeah. like, that's his thing. He's like, I'm going to always do that. You know what you I know? secretly hope is happening? I hope that both Mendez brothers want to have the private. One of them is like he's only allowed to have privates with me, <laughs> and he doesn't let the other Mendez brother have it. And I'm being honest, I'm more of like a seminar person. Like I'll do seminars like any day, but privates, I don't know. Yeah. I just never do them for some reason. Yeah, I don't. I don't, think, I, don't I don't think I've ever done a private. Like you know, in our school with Felipe, he's just like, like the private is just like grab me on a Saturday. Yeah, just grab me on a Saturday. I'll work on whatever you want on Saturday. Yeah. So it's like, it's like. I yeah. think it. I think it's weird to do jujitsu when other people aren't doing jujitsu. What do you mean? Like I don't Explain. think I, I don't ever see myself like in an empty room with just one other person doing jujitsu. You never come it's to my weird. house and, and roll. I the will. Brush. I will. I was just gonna let you know it's gonna feel weird. I did yeah. that with Junior not too long ago. Shout out to Junior <laughs> and to Drew. Who was talking about. Was it weird? Uh, you, no, no. Like it wasn't weird, but in my head it was weird. <laughs> did he? Have, did he put a candle on, like on the side? And- <laughs> <laughs> no. Come on in. <laughs> no, he put the whooping on. That's what he yeah. put on. Yeah, he was getting it. All right, Miguel, I'm gonna let you uh, uh, let you do the honors. Uh, oh, before the big, I do the, the honors, I got question. one more question. Oh shoot, go ahead. How the hell did you get the name the dog? Oh yeah, How we didn't ask that in the beginning, right? Huh? That was my dad. A couple of days after I was born, he's given all of my. Siblings. After you were born? Yeah, like a couple <laughs> of days after. Um, he's given all of my siblings nicknames, but uh. He got it because, like, I was always attached to him, like a little puppy uh, attached to their parent. So I just got the dog. And I don't, it's, I've gotten so used to it. I mean, 15 years getting called by that nickname. Yeah. So, just, so like, how, how does he say that nickname? Like, it's like, hey, yo, dog. Call the dog for dinner. Tell the dog. the dog that dinner's on the table. How does that work? How does it sound? 
honestly, like, say we're in, like, I don't know, we're in a grocery store. Just be like, dog, go get that. I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah. Like, honestly, it's so casual for me, but other people are like, there's a dog in here? Yeah. <laughs> like, what? That's dope. My oldest daughter, I've been calling her Monk since she was, like, could walk. Okay. I just call her Monk. I, sometimes I don't even realize and it's not it. from like Monkey or anything. It's, it's just from Monkey. Oh, okay. because when I, I thought was, maybe she was like super like. Peaceful. I was a very young dad. <laughs> <laughs> this is I, I'm gonna make myself sound bad at, as much as I think this story sounds cute, but I was a young dad. I was living at home. Um, I was not with my daughter's mother, and my parents, my parents and my sister. My sister lived at. She was older. She lived at home as well. And they would be like, they wanted my daughter's attention. So they wanted to, when she came over for the weekends because I had her every weekend, even as a nineteen-year-old kid. Um, they would be like, "You should go out. Go out with your friends." So like, I'd go out like drinking with my friends. Well, they were like, "Here's my mom encouraging me to go out." Meanwhile, any other time, they'd be like, "Why are you going out every night?" So just so they could like totally take care of her, yeah. give her a bath, do her hair, play makeup. And I would wake up on a Sunday morning, like hungover, and they'd be like, here, you know? Wow. And so the f- most fun thing that I could do was I would lay on the floor, like lay on my stomach, and she would just climb all over me. And it was funny. She'd always like sit on my head. So I would just be like, I would call, I called her monkey. And then as she got older, I That's called her bad. monkey. That's not bad. That's cute, bro. Yeah, but you know. Bro, you were a kid. I was so hungover, I'd lay yeah, on the floor were, and let my kid. daughter play. You were a kid. I was a kid. I Whatever, was a kid bro. with a kid. I could but see that's that. how I, that's how she got the, I called her monkey. Her mom called her monkey too, but like completely hey, separate what are, reasons. If you're the dog, what are the other siblings? Yeah. What are the other so, nicknames? <laughs> my older sister kind of got the short end of the stick. She's just called Pal. That's Pal. her nickname. <laughs> But then my little sister, who's seven, her nickname's Monster. Oh, wow. She's literally insane. <laughs> so, wait, it, it, was that three. three? Three girls? Yeah, three yeah. girls. Oh, God hates your dad. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear that? What? I said, God hates your dad. <laughs> Hey, he likes all the girls. No, for house. sure. I love I love girls, man. I, I, have, I got one I've, each. I have two. <laughs> I got a boy and a girl. I got this weird feeling that like, like girls are really easy to take care of in the front end and then it's going to get difficult. Yeah. And then boys are very difficult to take care of in the front end. And then and you don't worry about it. And then you don't much. worry about it later. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's definitely I, a different experience, man. You get a different package. I'm going to say all the, all the guys, all the dads that I know that have all girls, definitely, I'll say it this way. They definitely dated a lot when they were younger. And this is the this is the universe's the way of saying, remember what you did? Here's all girls. Oh man. Now you gotta deal with it. Dad was a stud. <laughs> I'll have to ask him that question. <laughs> yeah. What are your numbers, Dad? How many girls did yeah, you Yeah, sorry, Dad. <laughs> we threw it out there. All right. You wanna hit him with the last one? Hit her. With all right. One. Whenever you do wear it, do you wash your belt? No. There you oh, go. Sophie. She only what? wears it once a year. <laughs> oh, you probably <laughs> She's- washing your belt, I mean, I always wash my gi, always wash my no gi stuff. Like that, that would be disgusting if I didn't do that. Yeah. But your belt, I mean, it's like you're like washing away your hard work, you know? No, hot dog, no. hot dog is a sandwich. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> wash your belt. But it gets dirty. It's a piece of material, like Miguel always says. It's a piece of material. It Just should be spray, washed. Spray some Febreze on it. You're good. <laughs> I've been I've been guilty of that. I'm not gonna lie. You know, and, and as I think back, I went to the gym last night and my like my gloves smelled, but yeah. they, they kind of have like leather on them, so I don't. You went to like the workout I wash gym, them like once gym. every two years. They smelled so bad that I just like put them on top of this little kind of like uh, crate on in, in a closet, and I sprayed them like very aggressively with with like Lysol, and yeah. I just threw them in there. You should just. I wash my belt. Every single time. I'll uh, just up, get a new one if it really? gets bad. Yeah. Up until purple, I always had one belt. I may be like I switched belts, but now I have two belts that I kind of go back and forth between. And if now it's like maybe once a month. I, I, well, I should, I've been hurt, so I haven't trained for actually a couple of months now. But mm-hmm. up until recently, until that happened, I, you know, just kind of go back and forth and then. Every once in a while, just throw one in, throw one in the wash. I don't, I don't smell good like ever. Even like after I shower, I gotta I do just, like I a stink always. One of the, we had a guest on that told me this, and then I tried it, and then like one of the most popular videos I think I ever posted on social media was like just showing my, just like videotaping my hand putting 
the belt into the washing, the washing machine. machine. And it causes so much controversy. I got that from... It's like a hate oh crime. God, I, I, All the black belts are like, ah! Who's uh, BJJ over, four, over, over after 40? 40, yeah. I forget his... I'm so sorry. He just had another... He's 50 now, boy. Yeah, is he? Yeah. yeah. He, he so. does that. He puts it in. I wanted to do like... I don't... I think I did some music with it, but like I just wanted to do like somebody screaming. Like, ah! Oh, like, like the Hollywood, the yeah. Hollywood famous scream, <laughs> yeah. whatever that is. Ah! I just cut the video, but I don't, I don't know why. I mean, we know why it's controversial because old school guys. She's not know, old so. school, man. What's your no. juju with it? Well, <laughs> well, she did say like you know it, it's like you're washing away what I mean, old school is like you're washing away the knowledge and the the blood and sweat of your opponent. Am I wrong? Is that what you're saying? I mean, I grew up with a couple old older professors, so I don't know. Maybe they passed that on to me. They definitely I, did. I respect your decision. But I don't agree. agree. But I don't agree with it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Sophie. Listen, we're gonna we're gonna let you go. I want to thank you so much for for coming on. But I do want to give you an opportunity to shout out any of your sponsors or say hello to anyone or to invite Danielle Kelly on the show. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just want to say thank you to my main sponsor. I have it right here, Alex B from Clay, E Clean Bro from Jamie. Defense and then fight back CBD. Very cool. Fight eat, back used, eat to, clean, used to work bro. At the show. I think I gave him a follow oh, this and, morning. Oh. Wait, wait, wait. And mixology, of course. Mixology. Okay. Then we can. I know that you have those all on your IG. Instagram, oh my, right? You yeah. can you can go visit your Instagram, which is Sophie dot dog nine twenty two. There you go. There you and go. I know he's gonna say, "Look, she I'm didn't say the at. I'm not gonna say at. I'm not gonna say nothing. <laughs> it speaks for itself." Yeah. All right, now, Sophie, we're going to say goodbye, but don't hang up because we're going to come okay. take some pictures by the screen. My favorite part. So a little promo, okay? But, again, appreciate you coming on. Thank you so much for doing this with us. It was super yes. fun. All right, Thank take care. So All right. Thank you to Neutral Zone CBD, a combat family-owned company that supports athletes and the people who love them. Neutral Zone strives to deliver clean CBD products for sports recovery in gummies, lotions, balms, roll-ons, and more. After a competition, a hard rolling session, or a tough day on the job, Neutral Zone has a product designed to help you reduce inflammation, increase cell rejuvenation, and may even help with aging joints. Visit NeutralZoneCBD.com and get 25% off your order with code JJD. And follow them on Instagram too, at MyNeutralZone. Jiu-Jitsu's favorite monthly subscription box has now joined the Jiu-Jitsu Dummies podcast. The BJJ Box is delivered to your door filled with premium jiu-jitsu and grappling apparel, equipment, supplements, supplies, snacks, and more. The crew at the BJJ Box find the best in the world of jiu-jitsu and guarantee every box to be worth more than the cost. Each box includes four to seven items you're going to love. Visit thebjjbox.com and use code JJD10 to get $10 off your very first box. And give them a follow on Instagram at the BJJ Box. All of us here at the Jiu-Jitsu Dummies would like to thank the entire crew over at Flow and Roll for their tremendous support. They're renowned for their incredible t-shirt designs, and they've got something for everyone. Flow and Roll quickly rose up to become the premier custom apparel provider for academies, big or small, throughout the United States. Shoot them an email about your custom order, flowenroll at gmail.com, and they'll be more than happy to get you hooked up. Check them out on Instagram at flow underscore n underscore roll for samples of their gi and no gi kits. They conveniently offer flexible payment options too. Head over to flowenroll.com for more details, and while you're there, pick up a Jujitsu Dummy signature tee, now exclusively at flowenroll.com. And remember, you'll get 20% off your online purchase of t-shirts, rash guards, or gis with code JJD. Special thanks to George Hernandez, Claims Adjuster. Have you experienced damage in your residential or commercial property in the states of Florida or Texas from flood or fire, storms, theft and vandalism, even sinkholes, just to name a few? Don't get stressed out dealing with your insurance provider. Call George Hernandez today and let the professionals get you the most compensation possible. Visit HernandezClaims.com or call 305-712-6751 to get help now. And stay in touch with them on Instagram at HernandezClaims. Hi. There you go. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you can break it down? I thought, yeah. I, I, thought we were, right. I thought you were passing it to me. Thank you again to Sophie. That was, that was pretty, right? Impressive young lady, right? Yeah. Yeah. 
Easily, uh, yeah. Uh, you, we're back. You Just know so what? You know, oh, you went I, right I into it. I know. We're, we're back, Miguel. Do you want to start over? No, no, no. I was, I was yeah, just no, thinking no, about. I was I, thinking if it was okay for me to say it's something. Good. I'll if you had to think, if if it's okay, don't say it. No, I meant, I meant in terms of just like, like she reminds me a lot of my daughter. Like, okay, I, what's wrong with that? Nothing. It's, it's, a, um, it's just like the the cosmetology thing, like yeah. and, and the art thing. Like that's what yeah. that's what my oh, girls yeah, yeah. into. You, like you mentioned, you said like something the other day. Time. You were talking about like sometimes I'm watching UFC, my wife's watching something with headphones. My son is playing video games, and then I remember She's you said painting. my daughter is like doing music or painting. So painting, she's creative. Oh yeah, she makes bracelets. She makes. Yeah. She does all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. She, sometimes she does. She like to paint or draw. She's all of it. All, so. all of it. She's got a whole. She's got like a seven foot long table. It's like a craft table in oh, her yeah. bedroom. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, and she'll cool. like make stuff out of like I believe she made like a bunch of her Barbies. Like she loves fashion. She made a bunch okay. of her Barbies. Um like all new dresses all out of like toilet paper and different medium. Like she like made like real legit cool looking dresses. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was dope. Yeah, you know, the, but just like that, but still a killer, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. There's um, a little I'm, dog in her. I'm you know? super I'm super impressed. She was uh, uh you know, I, I will sometimes watch or listen to podcasts and, and I know when like I'm like, oh, I'm so happy when they're, yeah. I don't want to say the words talkative, but that they're engaged. They're engaged and engaging. Like, they're, yeah. it's not one or two word answers. It's like, you know, they're speaking eloquently about That's you how you know the, they like what from they their do. point of view. She loves the sport. That's how you know sure. she really genuinely loves the sport. Yeah. yeah. Unless there's points involved. All right, Unless there's points <laughs> involved. Unless there's <laughs> No points. <laughs> no points. So I got, uh, <laughs> we got some gifts for you guys. <laughs> Um, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to do the opening. So that for, for I love close. it. Dude, that, when you make that slap sound, it's like the identical slap sound from the salt and pepper song. Whip yeah. it. Is it? Whip this it. This is, uh, song. we got some gear from Epic, Epic Roll. Roll. Hey, congratulations on your brand new Tesla. It's pretty dope. Uh, to Matt. Thank you, Matt. He knows who I'm Epic talking Roll. to. That was for him. This is, uh, Bo, this is yours. Oh. That's cool. All right. I like uh, round. I don't know if you guys. I was watching. If he you guys don't remember, watching, it's, it's been a while since we had him on. Yeah. But you, you, every, I think That's I might cool have. I might have chose your design. I know you, cho you I chose. I chose this. You remember? Yeah. You, you he, got Helio's That's cool. Too. I don't know if I had. Um, if I told Boda to. Oh, and the back. You know what tomorrow like, is for me? I like right round. I like circle logos like that. Yeah. Yeah, they're very cool. You know what tomorrow is and for me? Lit. Look, so I I've been wearing mine. North South. As soon as I saw North South, that's fine. Helio approves. My uh, signature move, what the move, my favorite move, my favorite finish. So, Matt, where am I? Where am I at, Bo? Matt, thank you very much. We <laughs> very much idea. appreciate you. Thank you for coming on the show. Yeah, man. We're gonna do it again one day. Uh, love what you have going on. If you guys, I'm gonna buy uh, a house from you one check day. Check him out. It's uh, Epic Roll BJJ on yeah. Instagram. So yeah, I didn't say the at. I know. It's because yeah, you're. Look at me. You know what? You're coachable. I'm all grown. Yeah. I'm you're all you're getting now. younger. You're, you're getting you're eyes, getting so. younger. Yeah. That's a good thing. I really do like that about you, Milton. What's that? That I'm you you take con day? you well you you take constructive criticism when it makes sense. Got to. Yeah. Got to. You're and adaptable. With, yeah. You're like water. Let's <laughs> <laughs> not get into a Bruce Lee segment. All right. So again, <laughs> I, can't, I can't get enough of that. <laughs> right, listen. Thank you to Sophie. Thank you to our sponsors. Yeah. Thank you to Epic Roll for the gifts. We really yeah. appreciate it. Um, check me out at Uncle Milty BJJ. That's my personal IG. I also handle the Instagram for the podcast. It's Jiu Jitsu Dummies. And check our, out our TikTok at Jiu Jitsu Dummies Podcast. Is that what it is? You got to add podcast. I don't have TikTok. At Jiu Jitsu Dummies Podcast. For sure. Chick Chalk. <laughs> We had our, we we actually, uh, yeah, about mellow, huh? Like one, one, probably by the time this year, it'll probably be over 150. It's like 140. Um, but yeah, mm -hmm. like a Tony Mello, uh, little snippet yeah. was, uh, was, dude, if you well somehow, received. if you somehow find the way to combine heel hooking white belts and washing belts, oh, yeah, like if you find a way to combine that into a TikTok, you might break the maybe. algorithm, maybe, yeah. Maybe. Because those are the most two controversial. So anybody out there that's gotten like two, three hundred thousand, half a million, they're just like whatever, one hundred and thirty. That's good for us. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. We're building We're a humble uh, little podcast. Got a, an, an old forty-eight-year-old man running the yeah. TikTok. Um, we don't put out the funny. Well, we gotta do something funny again. We gotta I do something it. silly. We did I gotta get like uh, your next uh, list twenty whatevers in. That was no, organic, list, you know. As I, many this whatever's whatever, in twenty seconds. Whatever happens, happens. All you right, know? we'll do it again. Yeah, for sure. All right, hit him with your IG. Oh, it's uh, JJP. 
<laughs> it's JJD <laughs> underscore DJJ69. Bo? B A D W E R K S. All right, everybody. Bad words. Thank you for watching and listening. Peace, love, jujitsu. Peace, baby. love, jujitsu.